You can have, you can have, you could be doing something, right? And it's cool. You could be doing numbers. People go watch it. But do you have impact on culture and do you have impact on people's lives? That's the measurement that a lot of people don't understand. So it's like, yeah, you might have people to do stuff, but do people really listen to your stuff? Mm -hmm. Do you move people by your stuff? Is people influenced by your stuff? What impact do you have on culture? Not just black, just culture. Mm -hmm. Culture of now. It's different type of cultures. So it's a, it's a big ass measurement there, right? Mm -hmm. And then it comes into ownership. One thing about me and I was with a game, I can't say this for anybody else. Gil own 50%, I own 50% of all our shit. Even after the deal. We own all our shit to this day. We only do licensing deals. Don't nobody own our stuff. Mm -hmm. We not own, one thing about Barstool is our partners. We do a partnership with them whereas though we license our stuff with them they, and they go out there and get money with us. Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. We have a very, very special episode. Me and Donnie about to jump this guest. We about to tag team this guest real quick. If you notice, we have a different setup. This guest is so special that I gave him my seat. You gave up your chair. I gave I, up my chair. I, I, I switched seats for it. She's no. cabin. <laughs> she cabin. I'll switch seats for it. You know? Mr. Wallow267. What's up, brother? How you doing? Man, bless. Bless. Happy to be here. I'm happy to be here, Dave. You know, we came along. We both came a long way from... Atlanta, yeah, taking me to dinner that time on Peter sure. Street. Yeah, just like I was home for like I wasn't even home sixty days. You know, I was in, in we connected some type of way, and you took me down there, and we was kicking it. You know, so we both come a long way. You we did a TED talk, first talk. Ted, we did our first TED talk together here in Atlanta. Yeah, yep. so you know, it's just it just it's just real. Yo, let me tell you this: this is a real the wallow that you see, like when he's like up, motivated, and inspiring people. That's really him. So we at the TED Talk. Like, we're about to get started for the event. There's some delay. They're, like, setting up the cameras. And there's an empty room. Big and Wallow room. says, hey, yo, come in this room with me real quick. I'm thinking about to coach me or something. He's like, yo, hold this camera real quick. And he does the videos that y'all see. While we're waiting on the TED Talk, he's like, yo, I, something hit me. I got. He's like, I'm like, dang, right now? He's like, yo, you got to get it out where you can get it out. Just go. Just, mm -hmm. yo, hold this camera for me. I'm like, he really, he really him. Just did it. It's not an act. No. Yo, but th thanks for coming. I do got to ask, though, and you don't even got to answer if you don't want to. <laughs> I'd like you to answer. But the rumors have not been confirmed. No rumors. I don't, I don't answer rumors. I'm Okay, well, I'll just ask a direct question. I already knew what so, you answered. Yeah, because y'all haven't, like, yeah. the, no, oh, my God. You the bail man? No, no, you're not. <laughs> just give it to anybody. Yeah, I'll rock with you, man. <laughs> no, the, so, the, the whole thing is I would never answer that question. Why? I just won't. It don't matter. It does. No, I don't. Okay. When I saw Joe Rogan get $100 million, I was inspired. Why? Because I didn't know it was possible. I didn't think it was like nothing like that it's was possible. It's possible. It's extremely possible. <laughs> how you know? You know how I know? This is how I'm going to say how I know. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say I know because... Um, when you put the work in, everything is possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we don't, uh, 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 when you're really about your work and you really, when they open the hood and everything match up, you know, and it's, and I think it ain't just about the numbers. It's about multiple things. I don't think when you're going into, a, uh, uh, when you're going into a room, because it don't always happen inside of offices. The deals don't always happen. They can happen in a restaurant. Our first joint happened in the restaurant. Our second one happened like both our deals was under 10 minutes. Like the negotiation, like, you know, we'd talk, go back and forth real quick. Like so we sit down right here and then we go to legal with it. It's that simple. It's not hard, but it's a measurement of numbers. It's a measurement of cultural impact. Mm -hmm. And that's the, that's the shit that you explain that. Explain cultural that. impact is this. You can have, you can have, you could be doing something, right? And it's cool. You could be doing numbers. People go watch it. But do you have impact on culture and do you have impact on people's lives? That's the measurement that a lot of people don't understand. So it's like, yeah, you might have people to do stuff, but do people really listen to your stuff? Mm -hmm. Do you move people by your stuff? Is people influenced by your stuff? What impact do you have on culture? Not just black, just culture. Mm -hmm. Culture of now. It's different type of cultures. So it's a, it's a big ass measurement there, right? Mm -hmm. And then it comes into ownership. One thing about me and I was with a game, I can't say this for everybody else. Gil own 50%, I own 50% of all our shit. Even after the deal. We own all our shit 
to this day. We only do licensing deals. Don't nobody own our stuff. Mm-hmm. We not own, one thing about Barstool is our partners. We do a partnership with them, whereas though we license our stuff with them, they, and they go out there and get money with us. Can you can you explain like a more in depth on like the partnership versus ownership? Like what's going on in the space where I guess some people they just sell their whole soul or no? I don't do I don't believe is that the case. I think some people uh some people don't know. A lot of people don't know. They think they got to give away stuff. When you one thing about Million Dollars River Game, I can't speak for everybody else. When me and Gil created Million Dollars River Game, we did it from the ground. We didn't do it from oh, let's go get some money. Let's go. It wasn't. It wasn't as it, 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 you know. You always had dudes doing it, but I don't think it was more popular as it is now. Now you got investors looking for people. Oh yeah, let me grab him. Grab him. Uh, let me put this money to it. Let me start this. Uh, I own fifty percent, and so it's it's a little different for people. But it wasn't like that. We just started it. Six months later, we had a deal. In six months. In six months. We started in April. We had a joint by like November. Can you tell me about that deal? Licensing deal. Uh, that deal was, it took five minutes. It was so funny about that. We met up at a, a restaurant called Devin's in Philadelphia. Dave, Dave Point Nord and Eric Nardini came down. Extraordinary partners. They came down. We sat there. They said something. We said something. And it was done. We went to legal. So can you tell me the numbers on that? Oh, that was about right then and there. This is why it's so great. That was that was about like three point one million for thirty six months licensing deal, guaranteed 3. money. Three point one million guaranteed. Guaranteed. We only do guaranteed money. And you did it for six. You like from start to six months. Yeah, we was number a, one. We was number one on the Apple charts. We was just doing our thing, but it wasn't about that. See, see, this is what people don't understand. <laughs> it's a measurement of impact. You got million dollars worth of game. Then you got Gillian Wallow. So you're getting all this. Mm-hmm. So, and it's like, uh, we promote all day. We, we doing our thing all day. It's every day, day you see us. Yeah. We don't stop. So, so it's a big difference. It's a measurement like, damn. And one thing about us, we gonna work. We gonna get up every day and work. We're not going to the fake Hollywood parties. We're not trying to be friends with anybody. We the outsiders of this shit. Because you've been to our spot. We yeah. working. We in there working. For sure. We in there chilling. Gil in there smoking his you know, high grade marijuana. <laughs> we talking about business. And we handling the business. We on Zooms. We on is emails, lawyers, we handling business. And that's what I think separates us from a lot of people. We not doing all the fake shit, all the fake part. That shit don't mean nothing. Because when you go in the boardroom, they're not saying, oh, you was partying with what's the name? Oh, you took a picture with what's the name? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm just being straight up. No. And I think sometimes we get it up and we be sitting back here and we think all that stuff. No, that's not what we do. It's about execution. It's about execution. Not pictures and partying. That shit don't mean nothing. So here's the thing. And I see y'all like, the, the, y'all are top on the charts. And you got other people like um, like a Joe Button or a Drink Champs. And y'all got like, it's like y'all are like the tops, right? However, I don't think none of them got no deal like y'all got. So would, you, would, would it be that <sighs> y'all, your numbers are the same, but it's something else about you that, I'm not, also you know, to invest in you. you. You know what? I'm so, I'm so, uh, we live in a world, right? Uh, and I, and I deal with, and I, re, you know, I respect Joe and I respect Nori that we live in a world where it's though. I can't really speak on them because I never want people to take things out of context. I don't know their right, business. For sure, for sure. I don't know them. They, they got some shit going on. I don't know their business. So I don't want to even speak them or, or even try to assume or insinuate because I can get taken the wrong way. Gotcha, gotcha. I don't know. I, I really don't know their shit. And I don't know what they're getting. So you see what I'm saying? So, but I, I know they doing their thing. And I salute them because they was here before us. You see what I'm saying? And we got, you know, been got game and seen things from them. So only thing I could do is salute them, but I can't speak on their business. Gotcha. And I think that's where we get out of pocket in this joint when we be sometimes speaking on people's business. Mm. Cause now you're talking about some personal shit. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not equipped to do that because I'm not the lawyers. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So I only thing I can do is salute them for pick, making a, you know, a, a roadmap for a lot of people to do their thing out here. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So I've been trying to get Donnie to start a podcast, right? Like okay. Have our own show. Now we we'll always do our thing together. That's mm-hmm. my that's my sister. But on top of that, because I see how y'all are moving, it's like the million dollars worth of game is dope. And then what you got your own cultural following, right? Of people who follow you for what you do, like the motivation, inspiration. Gilly got his own like. I don't know. It's like a like a hoop star kind of, and I want to play him. I just know I'm not good. Don't enough. do that. Don't do that. What you mean? Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't play. I'm not. 
That's you smart. Oh, no. <laughs> that Jay is crazy. He would lose if he plays them. Oh no, nah, without a doubt. Yeah, no, nah, I, I, I wouldn't even play that game. But I'm saying he got like it's it's like. He has his own page personality. You have your own page personality. Y'all come together and it's another show. And I'd imagine that when people are looking at y'all, it's like the whole gumbo of the combination of Million yeah. Dollars Worth of Game individually and collectively. Mm -hmm. So tell Donnie to start a podcast, bro. No. Why not? I'm not going to tell his story. She might get do something else, but don't start a podcast. You go, I got something. See, let me explain something to you. Post more or no, something. no, no. She could do that. <laughs> but but, but y'all got some magic that's going on. We do. Well, me and Gil got, we got magic. No matter what he do outside of this, no matter what I do, ain't nothing bigger than Million Dollars Worth of Game. That's our home. Yeah. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And I think a lot of times people get caught up and they be like, oh no. And it's just everybody just start having these magical ideas. Like anything that we do decide to do is going to be under Million Dollars Worth of Game hub, but it's not going to be nothing far-fetched where I'm going over here or he going, that shit's not happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? We dying with this shit. For sure. But I'm not saying we're going anywhere else. We're still a team, but like you are building your own following. He's building his own following. So when y'all come together, it's obviously you have to have the, the chemistry and the magic, but y'all own person, all y'all stuff that y'all do outside a million dollars worth of game. I'm 100% sure it adds to the collective. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Movement we of always, all we always, we always just doing us, but it's like everything goes back to million dollars worth of game to run traffic there. Gotcha. You know, everything is about that because that is what, that's the big, that's the big show. That's what, what it's about. So, she don't want to do it. Don't force her hand if she don't want to do it. No, I, it doesn't matter. She didn't want to do the podcast now, together. I didn't want to do this podcast. And I forced her to do that. And I'm being totally honest. <laughs> she don't post. She don't. You saying she don't post? Let her chill. That's not true. That's not true. Why so, you trying to do that? David is always trying to micromanage my career. Thank you. What David <laughs> yeah, has to manageable. understand is, I was lit before becoming friends with him. Okay, he mm. wants he wants me not to. No, look, and, and so <laughs> let me be clear. Our definition of lit is different. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm about my money and my impact, That's period. And I, I don't need hundreds of thousands of followers. If it happens, it happens. That's totally cool. But that's never, ever been like the lane that I'm looking for. David wants me to have hundreds of thousands of followers. But what you have to understand, too, is I'm 100 percent organic. Mm -hmm. I don't run any ads. I've had nothing external driving people to my page other than me. So what I have right now is all on me and the, and the podcast. Like that's legitimately what happened. Um, David wants me to do a podcast. I went, I trademarked the name. I did everything, but I feel like you, I still miss the connection of how does this really benefit us as a unit mm -hmm. versus sending me in a different direction? Well, it's not necessarily, here's the thing. I wasn't thinking a different direction, right? So I have a I have um, a joint where I do like five minute Fridays. All the stuff that I do outside the podcast drives traffic here. Yeah, and I'm not saying she needs to have a whole bunch of followers. It's just <laughs> I believe in her voice, and if she if she had like thirty minutes for people to just hear her without my interruption, like there are some people like that that will only move based on her voice. So I'm I'm always pushing her to go out and do more that. and give more of her message not even herself but more of her message to the world yeah and i'm like i'll do everything for you just come to the studio we'll shoot it we'll do all that stuff just it ain't, it ain't always got to be a podcast it could just be her she could be sitting in a car she could be in the crib 100%. throw a camera on her or throw a phone you don't really need the camera all you need is a phone it's been empires built off of off of phones and shit like barstool sure. was built off of phones you what know you what i mean? mean like they did it was a lot of phones they was using phones like we was built off a of phone i mean i was every game was built off. outside of the show our whole movement is is the phone. Yeah, mm. like that's all. I, I shot Where's Wallow with the phone. Yeah, you see what I'm saying. So it's like I just think uh, it, it ain't always got to be a podcast. I think I think we in a space where the first time, first thing people think, oh my god, that was a nice post you had, or that was a nice conversation with you. You should start a podcast. I think it's more to that. You yeah, know what I mean? For sure. She might be more comfortable sitting on the couch and just kicking it. Uh, and that could sure. be just content. I think I, I, I think it's con it's about content, not about everything can be a podcast. Like you said, like I showed you, it's like two point four. As of June two thousand and twenty two, was two point four million podcasts in the world. Mm -hmm. Two point four. That's a lot. Yeah. So uh, you know, what I mean, I don't know if you know y'all need to do that when y'all got something. I don't know if she can have a segment inside the show where it go to that, where it go to her sitting on the couch and she just banging in the middle of your joint. That might, I mean, but just her taking it, she, cause she like, I'm cool. And she said something that was very important. And I think we got to understand that in the culture. She said, oh no, I've been lit. 
And her definition of lit was my bank account say that I'm lit, mm -hmm. not social media. Because there's a lot of people that's lit on social media, but their bank account don't reflect them that's being lit. They, 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 they financial statement don't say that they lit. Mm -hmm. They don't even have a tax attorney to say, oh, no, they, they, yeah. I'm saving them. So you, you understand that. So, so she says something very important. She says, I ain't use no ads. I ain't do this. I ain't do that. So sometimes you got to let people be them and be great at what they do. You know what I mean? It, it might not be a podcast. But if I just let Donnie sit there, then she wouldn't be on this podcast and she wouldn't be like. I'm not saying don't push you off the roof. Oh, yeah, for sure. That's what I'm just saying. So <laughs> I feel you. Now, the one thing I do, I do agree with David and I give you, I take total accountability. I've gotten lazy with posting content. And, you know, I used to be content, content, yeah, content. Sure. But she now because so we have the podcast and we got the clips and the episode and all of this stuff, I kind of have let the podcast just totally become all my content that I'm going to give you. Mm -hmm. I will get back in the game. And start shooting out content. I'm going to give you that. And I'm not saying no to my own podcast. I'm just not saying, you know, I'm a visionary. I just don't see how this makes sense. I That's feel right. like it causes division. And then people are sharing their attention. Like I feel that. like we need to be all in on social proof. That's that's my thought. We can continue to strategize it and think about it. Um, we're not saying no. I'm yeah. just saying I don't see it. Okay. And, and what she said about, uh, I understand what she's saying, like, and I understand what Dave's saying, like, there's a lot of times people want to connect with just you outside of business. outside, sure. and, they, and and sometimes people would subscribe to your real life over your business life. Mm -hmm. And that could be, introduce people to your business life as your business life can introduce people to your real life. Yeah. So I understand what he's saying because I didn't have conversations with him about that. Yeah. And uh, like a lot of times I see a lot of business people, every and post is buy, 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 buy this, buy this, course, 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 course. Yeah. It's like, do you got a real life? Yeah. Like, where's your real life at? Yeah. And I had talks with them, like, because you don't want to turn your whole life into just like a program of only time, only thing you want is this buy, buy, is, a, is an infomercial for you to buy something. Right. When it's like, you know, give something or just give, you know, show them your real life. Dave has my best interest. He's the best partner to have. He wants me to be more popular, y'all. That's what David wants. If we being totally honest, we'll be in the airport. Like we both do the Social Proof podcast. We'll be in the airport. Everybody's like, Dave, man, I love what you and old girl doing with the podcast. And I'm it like, it's it, me. Nah, it only be old girl. <laughs> She's standing right next to me. They're like, yo, I watch every episode every of Social episode. Proof podcast. And I'll be looking at Dai like, yo, um, you, you know <laughs> No, I don't really know. Yo, I watch every episode. Man. You, you watch a lot of people episode. watch clips. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You'll realize that a lot of people watch clips because they don't watch episode because they'll be like, damn, man, you should have what's the name on you? Like, we did have them on the show. <laughs> <laughs> right, for sure. You don't watch the show. 100%. So, you know, it's like, you know, I think it's always good. Like, like I'm going to tell you some real stuff, though, D. That's a good feeling to have when somebody don't know you. That's the greatest feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, when everybody know you now, it's like, ah, oh, mm -hmm. it's really top. You know what I mean? It's like, it's a great feeling when everybody don't know you. You know, yeah. I mean, I go through that all the time. I'll be loving it. I'll be like, bet, you don't know me. Nah, she'd be feeling terrible. She'd be like, no, oh, look at me. Look at me. You don't know me? I'm That's like, not oh. true. Every now and then I'd be like, for real. Every yeah. episode. And you watch any episode, you don't know me. Hey, I I, I want to ask this too. You're the cultural advisor. Of YouTube. Of YouTube. Mm -hmm. How you do that? Uh, being me and really having proof. And being like out here. Like you, you always say you got you got social proof. I love that. I remember when you first, I love that name because it was like I always say something. You got to have proof of concept, mm -hmm. and a lot of times people don't have proof of concept. But person to say I do this, I do you know like in a bio. Social media is based off bios, and people write all this stuff in the bio, and it's like you never did that. Yeah, I understand what you're aspiring to be, but you never did that. And one thing to read the way I was able to get that is because I had proof. You know what I mean of what I'm doing. I'm executing out here. Yeah. I'm an executor. And I, and I did a lot of stuff out here. You know what I mean? So I was able to get in that type of position doing stuff. We created an unbelievable program, YouTube Avenues. Uh, we went to uh, five cities, Philadelphia, D.C., Detroit, Houston, and Oakland, slash San Fran. Uh, we just finished the first cycle of that. We're working on the next cycle next year. But we educating people how to monetize on YouTube, uh, what demonetize you on YouTube, how to grow on a platform, uh, how to build your page out, how to get paid on it. It's, it's a lot we teach. You know, uh, unbelievable crew. Uh, a team of people. Can you give me some game? Can you give me Hold some up, game? Hold on one minute. Unbelievable. I'm, I got to give you these. I got to shout these people out. The crew, you know, our leader, Tuma Basa, 
Uh, we got Rachel over there. We got Mahalet over there. We got Adam over there. We got Bella over there. We got uh, Chelsea over there. We got Sydney over there. We just got a, a Brittany over there. We got an unbelievable crew and a cast of people uh, that's, that's, that look like us. Mm. And it's out here educating because a lot of times, for a long time, people thought YouTube was just a a big ass warehouse full of computers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No, it's real people that just like us is handling some of the biggest yeah. accounts and handling some of your biggest artists or so many of your biggest creators on the platform. Yeah. Shout out to YouTube, or Black at YouTube, YouTube Black too. It's a, a big crew of black people that work there that's doing anything. Yeah. That's really game changers. Yeah. You know I mean, it's creating a lot of stuff on the platform. Yeah. What you was reacting? All right, listen. Every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. So there's, there's a formula. And it's not just being good. Like there's some other stuff in this whole YouTube algorithm algorithm thing so tell us how to play to that you're the algorithm post create uh youtube shorts is one of the best cheat codes right now mm -hmm. youtube shorts oh my god take you to another level um and one shorts ain't hitting like that for some reason nah, I, I i tell you different because me and i was with a game been using shorts since the beginning and we got more numbers on shorts than some people got in a total catalog on one short like the shorts is unbelievable they do millions so shorts is, and they help grow up because shorts, you put the little short up there because, all right, for instance, whoever your editor is, I'll tell you editor, yo, my man, when you're doing this, I need you to chop me up about, from each episode, I need you to chop me up about like 10 shorts. You're like, what you mean? No, we putting them, sh and them shorts is going to, because on the short, as soon as you see the short, right there, say subscribe. Yeah. So somebody might, your short might be bouncing all around YouTube while your short bouncing all around YouTube. Somebody may never know you. Like, damn, that was a nice clip. Bang, subscribe. Let me check this out. Mm -hmm. Short is a trailer for the long form. That's all short is the trailer to the movie. Short is the trailer to the main show. And I don't think people take advantage of that shit. Shorts is very important on YouTube platform. And I'm telling you, the same way you throwing clips on, or you throwing clips on IG all the time, okay. Why you can't be throwing them same clips on shorts? Mm -hmm. Because the main thing is to get your YouTube jumping. Yeah. All the other stuff. YouTube is probably the hardest place to get subscribers at because it's real time. It ain't no too much cheating going on over there. Yeah. So you need to, and that's and that's like your that's like your network for real. Gotcha. That's where the network at. But that goes over a million subscribers like that because you're just using that. And that shit just whew, them clips be going crazy viral. I done seen people take clips off of shorts and put them on Instagram other platform. Some of our clips, them clips go crazy. You know, definitely right. take advantage. I don't care what nobody tell you. I'm telling you from the inside, YouTube shorts, bro. But you got to really work that shit. Every, every episode, go back. All these episodes you've done and all them clips you was throwing them, take them Jones. You know what I mean? Don't make sure no watermark on it. Just put all that shit. Stack your whole shorts up. It's easy. Make sure no watermark. What do you mean? Like, don't just do them raw. You know how you got right. the raw footage? Put that right. shit up on shorts. So don't put the logo on there? No, you put your logo okay. on there. No, I'm just like, saying no TikTok. You no, know, all that like shit. That. Just put your raw logo on it. Upload it raw. Put gotcha. your shit on and let that shit go. Or watch, you'll, you'll call me in a month from now like, yo, we put 60 shorts up in the last month. That shit went bananas. You'll see the growth. You'll see the growth because we've been using shorts since shorts first, like the first month, like a year ago when shorts first came out, we've been using shorts. How many of y'all post in a day? Uh, It depends. Sometimes it might be three. Sometimes it might be four. Every some, day. Yeah, Every some, day. but sometimes we, we won't. It depends on if it's an episode day or two days or three days outside of episode, we let the episode breathe. But we still be slamming that shit down. You know what I mean? Post, post, post. You know what I mean? So do you put the shorts up and then the long episode or a long episode and then you start It don't matter. The it don't matter. It's all going to be on your joint. It categorizes itself. Like you'll go on your joint, you'll see all the shorts. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it, and it, it, do, it, it do it itself. You ain't got to do, you, you really ain't got to do nothing. I'm going to show you. Like, it'd be like, damn, you'd be like. Uh, I, okay. Now that's but are you doing your shorts as a preview to an upcoming episode. You could do it to a preview to an episode. You could do it to whatever. Like, 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 like come here, look at these numbers. These shorts numbers. Ah, okay. Like, like, also use, what's the name? Also, every episode, make sure y'all use a YouTube premiere. Use premiere. 
Right. You know what premieres? Yeah, right? we yeah we premiere. Always yeah. premiere. Uh, you could put a trailer before that that could run it like you know what I mean the show to show like because a lot of stuff oh. you can do. YouTube and listen. Mm-hmm. So, so like, the trailer while it's premiering instead of just a static. Uh, no, you can do, no, no, you could do one before that like a show like a, 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 as they waiting over the week or however yeah. you put your your premiere up it's it a show you know what I mean so you can put a trailer up there it's a lot of stuff. All right, Reese. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Say less. Yo, um, the the back in the bar school days, I think you were telling me something. Um, and one more thing, yes, one of the uh, one of one of our big time people over there that teach all this about setting your page are right. You check out on Instagram. She's from Atlanta. Her name Rachie Baby. Yeah, Rachie Baby. She don't live here no more, does she? Yeah, I believe Rachie's still in the oh, queen no. of the day. Uh, Rachie Baby. She's the one that teach how to. Lay your page out, how to do all this shit, set it up, how your merch in the joint, how your merch bar and all. That's what she teaching YouTube avenues, all that shit. She's a beast. Yeah, Ray baby. All right, say less. Yeah. I will. I'll definitely huh? be in her up. No, she ain't got no course. She really YouTube. Like, she, <laughs> she is YouTube, bro. She is YouTube. <laughs> yeah, she work at YouTube. She's a beast. She run a, a lot of people accounts. Uh, a lot of, she, she, she do a lot of people releases. Some of the biggest artists, Lil Baby, Fredo Banks, she do everybody. She a beast. Got you. You were telling me one time that um, when you were in Barstool, you were learning. Yeah, like because learning the game. The thing about them, uh, Barstool was the first people that ever introduced me to a plug in my life. Like they introduced me to their plug, me and Gil. Mm. But but just walking around the office, everybody was educating me: the finance department, the sales department, the marketing department. You know what I mean, so I learned the game in there because it was a bunch of people in there educating me. It wasn't no. That's why. Uh, they're my family when it comes to business and they're great partners. It ain't no, it ain't no, oh, let me go, let me give you, it ain't no, let me give you some poke ass money and be, the, be in the middle and let me go get all the real money. No, no, they introduced me to the people that, that put them on the mat. Mm. And to do, so it's a difference. It's difference there. That's why, I, that's why I bumped with them. You know what I mean? Okay, so do you see that that only happens with other cultures? Uh, I think it happened with anybody. It's about who you're dealing with. I can't say it's only one culture, but I know sometime in our culture, it'd be a lot of cultural finessing. Cultural <laughs> finessing is, no, I'm dead serious. Cultural finessing is, oh, we got a company, we black, come over here. No, no, we're going to give you a million, even though you're worth 20 million. We're going to give you a million, stand in the way, and go get the other 19. But, oh, you're supposed to come here because you're black. <laughs> <laughs> But we finessing you, and you ain't supposed to say that we finessing you, and you ain't supposed to fight against the finesse. If you do, you ain't on us. You ain't with us. You a sellout. So it'll be a lot of wow stuff. You don't subscribe to that. Oh, I don't give a Listen, let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. I don't give a none of that. <laughs> I'm about me and mine. Yeah. Because I put this work in. I did that yeah. penitentiary time. I had to grow and learn. I had to come out here and put this work in every day. Yeah. Uh, uh, and, I'm, and I understand the power of partnership. I seen what some of the greats did. I seen what Jay-Z, how Jay-Z pivoted. I seen how Dr. Drake pivoted. I seen how Puff pivoted and took it to another level. They better watch. They're going to watch me pivot and take it to another level. Because I, I study the game. When everybody be out here partying, like I tell you, I don't do that. I'll be right in the crib, reading everything I need to read, up on anything I need to know. Oh, okay, this how this happened. Okay, this how this happened. I'll speak on me and Kevin Hart talked about it on the show. We need to start subscribing and getting educated on the power of partnership. Mm-hmm. 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 You know, you got people, oh, I'm independent, I own this. Okay, you own what? You own what? What do you own? 100% of nothing. Nothing. 100% of what? Where, where's, where's, where's your partners that have partnerships with advertisers? This whole big world we live in is about a commercial. This whole big world is a commercial. Everything is a commercial. Everything is ad rev, ad revenue. Who? Okay, you independent. Where's your connection to ads? Where's your connection to advertisers? Mm. Do you know the big companies that spend the money? Do you know where the big corporations or the advertising agencies they're using? Like, what are we talking about? This shit is about ads. That's all this shit is about. One big commercial. And if you mean to tell me you don't need no ads, you independent, you this and the third, you in Oh, you, okay. How long are you going to be breathing? And I ain't saying you can't do your shit how you want to do it. It's cool. But when you say you're independent, you're saying, I'm, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to be mindful of what you're saying. You're saying you don't, you don't want no help because I like OPM. <laughs> I love OPM. When I'm you're not. talking about partnerships, though, are you talking about equitable partnerships or are you talking about 
just bringing somebody on the team fee based. I'm paying you your fee, but I'm calling you my partner. No, partnership to me is OPR. You know what OPR is? Other people resources, other people relationships. Mm-hmm. OPM, other people's money. So my whole thing is like this. I'm big on relationships. See this right here? They'd be like, damn, wow. I got a billion dollars worth of favors in this phone right here. Billion dollars mm. worth of favors. <laughs> Not contacts. Billion dollars worth of favors. I ain't even use them. I got people that didn't call me from some 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 powerful people. I the people that didn't, that didn't call me while then he's just, oh yeah, sure, we got this. We're gonna do that. Me and Gil gonna do that. Okay, cool, I got this. Boom, boom, boom. Cause it's not always transactional for me. Mm-hmm. Especially when I'm dealing with people that like their relationship is more powerful than the money. Yeah. Even though it might be like, damn, I could, uh, you know, I could have I could have sent them an invoice for 150, 275. You know what I mean? But why? You see what I'm saying? It's like I know I could call them and they could call anybody in the world. Who's who's somebody that you owe? Like somebody they did something big for you, they ain't wanting nothing. Cause obviously you're doing that for other people. But like who's somebody that you owe that like, yo, yo, they they helped me down. I owe too many people. Mm. And what, what I'm gonna say this, what I'm gonna say this, Dave, is this. And sometimes I pay it back in different ways. I owed you for for taking me to dinner in on Peter Street when I first came home from jail. You took me to a restaurant, you took me to dinner. And uh, you gave me some game. You gave me some information. We was talking about speakers. We was talking about a lot of shit, right? I owe a lot of people. I owe my grandmother. Uh, I owe the older lady that seen me doing some dumb stuff when I was young and called my grandma and took me home. It's so many people. We all owe somebody. I'm not going to say that because sometimes we do say we don't owe nobody shit, which is that way. But when you saying old people, that's a big ass word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it might be my new shit. Might be small shit, but everybody owes somebody. We gonna get that right. Yeah. Uh, now, when you just when you say I go and do this and I make this move, if I did today and you today say, listen, we gonna go out here and we gonna dig a hole and we gonna dig this hole, we gonna dig all this lot, we gonna do this whole lot, we gonna clean it out and we gonna build something on here. Me and you. Now, if somebody come about that and tell me, now nah, I need to have a room in there. You should. I don't owe you that. I put this work in for that. Yeah. I might owe you a favor or I might owe you something because I know you, but come on, man. Sometimes we we don't know how to departmentalize, you know. First of all, the entitlement thing is dangerous, yeah. but we don't know how to departmentalize or, you know, what the transaction need to be or what a favor is or what it might look like. Yeah. You know, and I think sometimes that's where we get messed up at. And a lot of times in our culture, uh, what's the name says something real deep? Shout out to Charlemagne. Me and him talk a real lot. We talk a lot. Right. Hours. We talk. And uh, he's one of the dudes that gave me a lot of game. Mm-hmm. About bit like. Uh, and the, one of the most powerful. And, and he helped me understand a lot. And one of the most. Because he's been through a lot. He got beat up a lot of different ways through this shit with, with our folks. He said. I love us, but I know us. Mm. And that was the most something that I carry every day. I don't like to beat my people up because a lot of times we've been through a lot of shit. A lot of times we react and we do things to each other that sometimes it be from the trauma, it be from defense, it just be from a lot of shit that we've been through. Yeah. And we don't know how to just love each other, man. Um, and I see it all I see it all the time. That's why a lot of times I just me and Gil be in our whole own little world. Because we see like, you know, and it's a lot of stuff he's been through and he educated me on. And it was things that he told me about that I had to go out here and see. And it's a lot of fake shit when it comes to that. Do it for the culture. That culture shit people be talking about. <laughs> that shit be cat. That shit be cat. You see what I'm saying? When people tell you that. Because a person to tell you that for their benefit. Mm-hmm. For their company benefit. For their movement benefit. But it ain't for the culture. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody say that shit and we overuse it so much that now it's just like a gimmick. It's like a sales point. It's like a a, a finesse. Yeah. And it's like, come on, man. Just be straight up. We can, how can we use each other, man? Yeah. I'm cool with that. What you need, this is what I need. Mm-hmm. That's the best thing you can say, but don't try to tell me or try to make me feel bad because I'm doing something that's beneficial me and my team. But it's cool if it's benefiting you and your team. Mm. 
Yeah. It's cool if they do it. It's a problem when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about that. Shout out to Finesse Two Time. That's my guy. <laughs> but think about it. That's how we work. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to be mindful, man. And you got to understand who's on your team. Who's your tribe? Your tribe going to match your vibe. Who is that? Who is the people that at the end of the day, y'all going to go to the table and break bread? I know you might do some stuff. We might get together with certain people and do a little of this and collab here, collab there, collab. What is we? A collaboration mean a value exchange. Yeah. If you don't bring value to value, you devalue value. So don't say that we collaborate when we ain't no value exchange. Say yeah. that you need me to help you. And I can deal with that more than you trying to convince me that there's going to be a value exchange when it's not. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's deep, man. But you got to be, you got to stay 10 toes down the issue and know what your journey is. We all ain't going to f with each other. That's one thing I learned is, is black, white, green, red, whatever your nationality is, everybody's not going to f with each other. Everybody not going, let me clean up. Everybody's right, not going to mess with each other. Mm -hmm. That's humanly impossible. Yeah. And it is what it is. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10,000? Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po positive, you're going to make a million dollars. Would you give me 10000 Of course you would. It's no-brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. How big is your team? Uh, or how many people you got on? Because I, I went in there and I was just, I, one, I was just, I was blown away because I go in there, it's just, him, Gilly, and the cameraman. One young boy. <laughs> I'm like, golly. That's, that's all we need. Like, like, like we got them, but then we got a team of people, you know, over in uh bar studio that handle stuff like Edwin and all that stuff. But we do all our own stuff. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're the only uh partners of bar studio that got their own operation. You know what I'm saying? Yo, do they got a lot of podcasters in Barstool? No, they got they got podcasts. Yeah, they got a lot of podcasters inside the building. It's different rooms in there where people shoot at. It's a lot of this, you know. That's why when I seen this, I'm like, damn, you got a good joint because this is this, you know, it's a bunch of shows that could be shot in this joint. Yeah. Like if you live in Atlanta, there's a place where people could come and shoot their show. You see what I'm saying? Gotcha. All you need is like a screen in one of these rooms, and people just put their logo up and then shoot in front of it. It's like it's dope. It seems like so you building store. something beautiful. I I I, I feel like bar stores like really building something, man. They no, are, they're creating a no monster. What, what, what they understand, they understand. They know how to measure tomorrow. When we went to them, they said, "Listen, man, they know how to measure tomorrow." <laughs> they said, "They said, they said this. This is this what they said." Uh, we had a lot of people that we seen from the culture, right? That would see us and be like, "Man, y'all doing y'all thing. Y'all killing them. Y'all doing this, this, and the third. I mean, Gil be like, "Come on, let's do something. Let's make it happen. We gonna get together." We went to them. And we sat at the table. They said, "We got to do something." You guys are going to be f***ing huge. Mm. Mm. Okay. This is the six months in, first, first dinner. Yeah, this after I got off the phone with Courtney Hope. This was the head of Spotify. I had talked to him one time, and it was a crazy call. He's a powerful individual. Mm. And uh, whew, it was just a crazy call. Was, yeah, was, give me some, give me some, like, call, fly on the Shout out to Shaka Zulu, too. Because uh, Shaka Zulu was one of the dudes I didn't know he I didn't even know he was at uh I didn't even know he was at I didn't know Shaga Zulu was at uh Spotify at the time. Uh but I was at a festival in Wack One. It was like, yo man, tell Gil, his boy, man, him and Shaka Zulu were like brothers. They used to be in Atlanta together. Mm. I called Gil like, yo, you know Shaka like that? See, that's my man. I said, yeah, over this spot. We got on the phone with Shaka. Shaka made some moves and some shit things happened, whatever. And uh we talked to the head of Spotify at the time, Courtney Hope, and he, you know, he was trying to give us an offer. We couldn't refuse, but he was talking about ownership. And he was like, nah, mm. nah, you know what I'm saying? I still got the emails and all that shit. It was like, so it was like, 
you know, we had different conversations and like, you know what I mean? We had a, uh, and even in this situation, I'm not going to say who, but we had two big ass conglomerates that was also in the bidding war this <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it was like, war. we're going to create a bidding war, We're going to be Donnie. in a bidding war. But I'm, I'm interested to see how you transitioned away from ownership and put the emphasis on licensing. Like, we want a deal, yeah, but licenses. it's licensing. Licensing is everything. Like, you got a lot of recording artists that get licensing deal. They own their masters and own their stuff. So they get a licensing deal. Licensing deal mean it's a great deal. It mean, like, I'm going I'm to license all my intellectual property over to you. You have relationships to get my intellectual property monetized. We gonna bust some money down. Yeah, it's great. No, everybody wins. Yeah, like ain't no ain't no problems with that. Everybody wins. Some people that might not be their situation. They might be like, listen, man, you can own this. Shit. Go ahead. You know what I mean? This is third. But I think it's. I think my whole thing is I don't care what nobody do. If you decide to sell your catalog, you do that. But at least build that shit up. Yeah. So you get some real money for it, and you you, you know you'll be able to do this because everybody have this. We live in this world now, where it's though. Everybody had this idea of what they think somebody with generational wealth is to somebody. Generational wealth might be patents, might be some trademarks, or might be, or might be, or might be some content. Then, then the IP to the content. It ain't always gonna be real estate. It ain't always. But I think we get in this box where it's though everybody come out here. And they try to beat people down so much. Oh, you got to be doing this. You got to have real estate. You got to do stocks. You got to be. Th Bro, calm the fuck down. <laughs> <laughs> calm down. Wait. Wait. <laughs> I'm not saying nobody would not to do. You see what I'm saying? I got intellectual property real estate. That's mine's. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And I understand people got, listen, man. <laughs> Everybody got to do their thing. But I know my I know what mine is, and I think as black people, we gotta really start focusing on what we good at doing in our family and what us for. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? And generational wealth is different to everybody. It's different. Hey, you got people like you. You got people like Marvin and them. They they took they took life insurance policy and showing you how to get that. Mm. They ain't got nothing to do with it, with, with real estate. Yeah. They ain't got nothing to do with stuff. They got that's how you. So everybody got a different way. You just gotta find your way out here. Yeah. But don't get. I think a lot of times we get caught up on what's 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 the wave for the moment, and we get f***ed up. And a lot of people go broke. You know what I mean? People went broke about crypto. You know what I mean? People went broke trying to get into real estate. You know what I mean? People went broke, and ain't nobody talking about this no more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Everybody get on there, and, and black people get on there. I'm telling you, if you don't do this, you're dumb. You're stupid. This you're gonna be broke forever. <laughs> 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 like I don't even want to see another infomercial. Like I don't even want to see this shit no more. Yeah. Like everything is like if you don't do this, you everybody's not built to be an entrepreneur. Everybody don't have the the drive, and everybody don't have the discipline, and everybody don't have it in them to say, "Hold up, two months went by, I ain't make no money, and I still got to pay this payroll." Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm -hmm. Oh, it's a different game now. Yeah. So entrepreneurship in the last couple of years it looked flashy because you know everybody. The, the entrepreneur that was built was the entrepreneur that showed you them coming in Bar Harbor, coming out of the Chanel store, coming out of the Gucci store, coming out of here, or driving a Lamborghini. But they ain't never show you no business. <laughs> I think that's a good segue into the conversation that we had on the phone last night. Like all intellectual property. I think a lot of people are monetizing somebody's intellectual property, not necessarily their own. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about this culture of entrepreneurs who were birthed in the pandemic and, and what's going on from that point to now, what we see happening now? I've seen a lot of them get extremely aggressive lately. A lot of them is, is a lot <laughs> of them is angry. aggressive. Tell me what that a lot means. of them is angry. I'm seeing them speak about they ain't got nothing to do with them. They just mad and they trying to force people because they don't realize, no, you're an entrepreneur, you're your you're pandemic uh Pretty course work. seller, mm -hmm, you're sure. a pandemic expert mm -hmm. and people bought that shit. I knew I knew dudes that was buying shit to buy because it, it was a wave of oh shit, we got money we gonna start a business let me buy I know dudes that bought courses and I guarantee you if I go to most of these dudes that sold courses and they looked at the open rate for the people that bought courses a lot of people ain't even opened them courses up yeah to this day that's mm -hmm. true so I think a lot of and, and I think it made a lot of people get angry and aggressive and they just want and they didn't realize like yo that shit over with that money is over with <laughs> <laughs> that's so over with do now. you shouldn't have all that money you told them Amex is up spent all that money you ran through the hammer you ran through all this bread and then on top of that we're gonna be straight up a lot of people not even business people what they did is somebody gave them the game 
of, I got an LLC, mm -hmm. two, three that was sitting here. Somebody helped me get my personal credit together. Then I ran into somebody uh, that understand business credit. They went ran my sh Now I got some platinum and maxes on these three different companies and these limits. Let me go crazy. Let me go get this Lambo. Let me go get this, uh, all this drip. Let me go get the Rolex. Let me go get this. And it's like, people was watching them sitting at home that really got businesses and they sitting there saying, I'm not doing enough. Mm. No. Yeah. You really got a business. Yeah. Just like the girl that's running around here. You, you know what I mean? Sisters, I've been, in, I spoke at a lot of women uh, conferences and I had, to, I had to check them. I had to check a lot of women like, listen, 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 listen. hold up, hold up. You sitting there, <laughs> I'm not doing enough. I only sold 35 t-shirts. I only sold this much hair. Oh, my boutique ain't this. And look at her. Baby girl, look at me. What you doing is actually real. But you got to get off of Instagram. Mm. Get off of Instagram. And you're looking at that chick that keep being on all these beaches. You know what she's not showing you? She's not showing you the other side of the camera that fat is taking the pictures that she's, <laughs> that she's, selling, that she's selling that thing to. Ah, <laughs> not that she's not doing no business. <laughs> She went and got her body done. The main man is, is taking care of her. But she got you thinking that she doing business because you keep seeing her buy bags and all this other shit. She but doing transactions. She ain't doing it. business. She not doing no business. And you all sitting at home and you really doing business. Oh, things ain't going right for me. Things ain't this. Oh, why this? And why me? I ain't going to start my business. That. And then we got the flip side of that. I'm going to say something to all the entrepreneurs out there. The real entrepreneurs is really doing it. Doing it from the ground. You starting that t-shirt line. You're doing your music or you're you, you, you selling, uh, you're cooking, you're doing this. Let me tell you something very important. It's 8 billion people on this planet. You better not. You better not. Let them 20 people that you don't, that you know directly, them 20 little people stop you from connecting with the 100,000 customers that you got out because you got in your feelings because them 23 people that you know they supported you once then double back ain't nobody support me they don't support my friends I hate them joints on Instagram my friends don't support me why is you worrying about your friends you only know 50 people it's 8 billion people on the planet you mean to tell me them 20 people gonna stop you from moving I had to shut my business down because nobody was supporting me for them 20 people you know is you losing your mind mm. You losing your mind? You let 20 people, most of them don't even really like you like that. And they might be jealous because you're doing something that they're not doing. Mm -hmm. And you let them stop you from connecting with them other people. If you would have went 60 days or 90 days more, you probably would have connected with some investors. You probably would have did an event for your catering business. You know, and sometimes you got to do some shit for free. One of the greatest things I did, I made a million dollars. I probably made millions off was for free. You was there. I get a call from Jacory that time about the TED Talk. Mm -hmm. Nicole Purvey. She called me. She said, Wow, well, though, I think I got some for you. I said, How much they how much they charging me, man? I mean, I mean, how much I'm getting? <laughs> this one I understood what invoices and booking was. I'm talking about this was like in uh 2018. I'm like, oh yeah, bet. It's gonna be in Atlanta. She said, Yeah, you're gonna do a TED Talk. This and third. I said, What? How much are they giving me? She said, Wow. Well, <laughs> Wow, though, this is going to be for you. I said, what you mean it's going to be for me? How much they giving me? I'm popping. I need some money. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, 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 she, uh, she said, just, just hear me out. I get on the phone with you, Corey. He said, listen, Wow, though, I'm going to put you on this TED Talk. I don't have no money for you, but I got a hotel for you. And that's when he put me in one of my favorite hotels in Atlanta, the Whitley. Mm -hmm. right, I didn't know, but I like that, John. <laughs> he put me in there. He said, I'm going to put you in there. I'm going to get you a flight, too. He got me a flight, too. This then the third. So I said, all right, cool. Got me a flight. He put me in there. I went and did the TED Talk. I forget my brother's killer. TED Talk, you remember that? Yeah, he was sure. there. I lost count of how many bookings I got from that speech. Mm. Uh, so when I'm saying do something for free, you got some good food and you know your food snapping, this is what you do. Find events that's happening. Hey, go Randy John. Go look for flight. I'm going to cater your event for free. What you going to come out of pocket? A couple hundred dollars or something? You know what I mean? If you, first of all, find the people in your family or find the friends that you know that's willing to invest in you. Yeah. Find the people that's willing to say, what girl you, listen, cuz I'm trying to do this, this and third, I need 500 dollars here. Because that one, that one event that you cater for free could turn into 50s. Because if your Facts. food really like that, if your food really like that, people, and your preparation is like that, your, your cleanliness is like that, the way you look when you're in there serving food, your team, 
is over. The look is the hook. Mm. 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 Make sure you're prepper. Say, you know what? Let me get this person something. Oh, let me go to this event. Damn, I know all these people going to be there. You know what I'm going to do? Like the sister I was talking to that make signs. It might be a big convention down here. One of y'all might be having a big event down here. Him 500 might be having a big event. I would advise this sister, you know what I want you to do? I want you to make a big, a big, a big recession proof sign. And I want you to present it to him. Dave will get you in, present it to him on stage. And they're going to be like, damn, well, what you do? How, how you? And you know how many people in that crowd are going to buy one of them signs? Mm, are you listening? Right. So you got to understand the look is the hook. And you got to understand entry. You got to know how to enter into different worlds and different people. Yeah. And you got to get exposed to new lives. A lot of times we be so caught up in the neighborhood because every time we do things, it's about oppressing people in our neighborhood. Yeah. Everybody want to oppress. Dude want to oppress the girl that, that he ain't with no more his ex. The woman want to oppress <laughs> her ex. You want to oppress your mom or your cousin that don't like you or people that talk bad about you. A lot of times we want to oppress people that don't even care about us when it's like, when is you going to press the people that want to buy this stuff from you? Facts, yeah, facts, talk facts, about facts. it. Your customers, man. Like this boy Dave, I would call Dave out of nowhere. And he, he wouldn't even be expecting it. I might be walking down the street. I might be doing something. It's early in the morning. Six, seven in the morning. I'd be like, Dave, man, you f***ing killing it. He'd be like, what? <laughs> and a lot of times we got to celebrate ourselves and know. And, 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 and a lot of times, forget all that humble shit. Humble mean to me, don't celebrate the great things you're doing for yourself too much because it might make me insecure. Oh, say uh, it. So don't say that. Be humble. Motherfucker, tell you be humble because you did some extraordinary shit. Oh, yeah, you got you to gotta stay humble. No, you stay humble. You stay humble. And you, you, stay, you keep <laughs> you your, humble, humble. your humble ass at yeah, what you're not doing. <laughs> but don't tell my man Dave to stay humble. Don't celebrate and be happy and excited and pop his shit in there because he did something extraordinary. Yeah. He overcame something extraordinary. He a black man in America. He could be in prison, jail, jail or in dope, but he not. Mm -hmm. He take care of his family. He a great husband, great father. He got a great business here. Pop your shit, Dave. You that mm -hmm. so I'm saying? You that guy, man, because I'm talking. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I, I do got to say, them, yo, every time you call, it be right. Yo, it be random too. It ain't like nothing I'll be like, Dave, you doing like that? But it was like, just call me out of nowhere. And the thing that you say, bro, be the be the battery on my back every time. Like, I'll be like, Dave, I'll be like, Dave, you keep like, he be like, for real? I'm like, Dave, you got a facility down there. You know how I many people that don't got a facilities? You know how many rappers that got millions of dollars never owned their own studio? Mm -hmm. Like, you started mm -hmm. right. You got a facility, bro. You can put a recording studio on here. You got a facility where you can record all these shows at. You can record podcasts. You got to join in there where they can have a speaking engagement at. Uh, event space. You can do anything up there. You got a whole facility. You got a, re a reception desk. You got a facility. I'd be like, he'd be like, I didn't think about that. I said, Dave, I did. And I've never been there. This before I even came here. D. I never even was here. I'm just seeing it online. I'm like, yo, this dude killing it. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we don't salute each other enough. I did that with a lot of people in this game. There's a lot of people that I called and saluted. Like mm -hmm. early in the game, like a lot of people I call, be like, yo, you know what I mean? It ain't nobody that's doing something that I never gave no props to. You see what I'm saying? Regardless of shit that happened, I gave props to everybody. I always do that in public too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like, I remember I told Joe Buttons on, uh, we was on, uh, on uh, Clubhouse and I said, yo, bro, regardless of the little back and forth we might have had in the past, you that guy. And I'm thankful for you because you created something and you did something, boom, 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 for a lot of people to have you know, a vehicle to get, you know what I mean? Yeah. You show, you know what I mean? So it's like, I salute people because bro, it ain't causing me nothing to say you doing your thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been doing that for a minute too. I ain't gonna lose I, no money. This was like years ago. People would just send you clothes and you'll just wear them and shout them out. Like yeah. it wasn't about no money or nothing. It's It'd just- be nice. Them joints be nice too. I'd be like, damn, this show is nice. I ain't gotta pay for no gear. <laughs> 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 like straight up, you know what I mean? And it's like, and then sometimes it's like you, you, you you be uh you start doing so much, you traveling so much, you gotta say to yourself, let me take time for myself. Or let me rest more, let me do this. But it's what like that look like for Walla. Uh I rest a lot now. I'll be able to get, you know, because I started uh departmentalizing my life and saying, damn yo, bro, you gotta chill. go ahead and get some sleep. Departmentalizing like, you know, your life, what you mean? Like understanding that you just can't run. Oh damn, I need time for rest. Damn. I gotta go. And get these massages this many times a month. I gotta go get my feet done because sometimes they look like a caveman feet. 
<laughs> so I'm saying, say like you got to stop tripping. You get let your nails go too long. Them joints are wow. You know, so it's so it's different type of things. Like damn, bro, take yourself, uh, go by yourself sometime and go have a nice meal. Go to the bookstore by yourself. Spend this much time reading and and looking at documentaries or looking at information on YouTube to get your game and stay on point. Uh, it's just different things, you know. Let me ask this question because I want to know where that perspective is coming from because it's. You weren't doing those things before. You grind and grind and grind and grind and grind it. And then you reach like this level of success. And then we start doing self-care. So my question for you is, are you advising people, yo, you should start compartmentalizing your life while you're trying to get to a goal? Or did this, like did, once you hit the goal, you're no, like, all right, now I'm out doing it. It's not really advisory. It's not really, that, it's not really advising people. It's just about... uh I'm just telling people what I feel at the moment, mm-hmm. but still, I do this outside of still killing shit. Like, I'm still going hard <laughs> every day. I don't give a when nobody say like I ain't like 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 it's sad, but I really ain't got no life outside of killing shit. <laughs> <laughs> what a flex, yo! I love it. <laughs> what like I get flex. up every day and go in beast mode. I got to because that's my excitement. Like a friend asked me one time, she was like, "Wala, what do you do for happiness? And what do you do for joy?" I'm like, uh, I grind. She's like, wow, that's not. I said, well, that's mine. You know what I'm saying? It might be a, f- a crazy life, but it's lonely at the top sometimes. And sometimes you just got to, I just, that's what I enjoy because this is what I dreamed about doing when I was in the joint. So I enjoy just boom, 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 boom. You know, now when I have a kid or something, then his life going to be different. Right, for sure. But right now I'm just in beast mode because I'm just like, that's what makes me happy. I love, I love writing something down on paper and saying, getting the logo done. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to make this shit pop. Yeah. And knowing 90 days out, I could turn this into something. That's my personal thing. Somebody else might do like other shit. Cool. Yeah, 20 years in prison does something to a man. And I don't know if, I mean, you've been out what, two years, three years now? I've been out five. Five years? Yo, uh, like no, no, what's the name? Bro. February be six. February makes six, six years. years. <sighs> and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to frame a question to where I, I, being in a hood, being in the hood, let's say for twenty years, you get out, you still have some of those habits from the hood, mm-hmm. right? What are some that I don't know if you can think of any any effects of being in prison, even some mindset stuff that you dealt with that it pops up every now and again in your life, like no, a lot of shit, a lot of shit, like I think from prison you're gonna be messed up here forever. You know, you ain't going to always come back 100%. You're going to have things like, it could be just things I eat. It could be uh, my approach to things. Like Give me an I got, example. Like, I got a different approach. Like, when I got up every day and I was in the streets and I wanted to sell some dope or rob somebody, I knew I was going to do that shit. So I had a mentality of like, oh, this is easy. I know I'm going to do this shit. Because I ain't got to worry about the police. I ain't got to worry about this. I ain't got to worry about because I ain't doing nothing illegal. So it'd be like, it just be this beast mode you have. And uh, that streets, streets give you an unbelievable hustle, unbelievable grind, and it give you an unbelievable ingenuity. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? That you can't get nowhere else. So the way I look at things, I'm always looking at it from, you know, because everything I learned from the streets, forever marketing, I learned from the streets when I was writing on walls. You see what I'm saying? I learned that. And I just learned that in the streets, the people that win is the people that are just being themselves to this rawest form. Mm-hmm. So by me being myself in the corporate world, I'm going to win. How did Gil help you transition? Is there anything he helped you transition Man, out? He gave me, because Big Cuz gave me a lot of life and a lot of understanding and based off a lot of experience that he went through. You see what I'm saying? That made the transition good. And like Cuz, you know, Cuz had a platform, but we had a real conversation when I came home. He was like, Cuz, just do you. And when it's right, we're going we gonna to form like road drama and f- this shit up. That's all he said. He said, but go ahead because I see you want to... You just go ahead and get crazy, do you? And then when it's time, we going to do this shit. And we did that. But I had to go get my feet wet and I had to see things because he wanted me to like, no, you got to see how, you got to see that this shit ain't all what Instagram say it is. Yeah. Go out there and I go out there and I be doing this and doing that and I be like, yo, cuz, where you at, man? I got to holler at you. Pull up. I'm like, man, you ain't going to believe this weird shit that happened. Boom, 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 bang. And he be like, you remember when I had that conversation I was telling you about this, that, and the third? Mm-hmm. I be like, yeah. Like, damn, you did tell me this shit is all bullshit. <laughs> this shit is all one big illusion, man. I was like, damn, I ain't never think. I'm like, all right, bet, I'll be back. And I, you know what I mean? And it was always like, you know what I mean? Because it's like, man, you know, you got you got to figure out if you if you 
Chicago Bulls, or if you Sixers, or if you the Knicks. But you got to understand, if you play, if Detroit Pistons your team, them teams, them players on the team, that's your team. Chicago Bulls ain't your team. Mm-hmm. And once you figure out who your team is and how to move and you respect that, y'all going y'all gonna to win. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And you got to know how to play your part. And I think what's great about me and Cuz is that some days he going to go out there and score 50 and I'm going to be giving him his water. Mm. Mm. And some days I'm going to go out there and score 30 and grab 10 rebounds and he going to be my coach. And some days I might be passing him his towel. And some days I might just be a fan cheering him more. Some days he might be a fan cheering me on. The great thing about us is that we understand together each achieve more. That's what team means. Teamwork makes the dream work. A lot of people don't understand that. That's why you see people full with a lot of problems and all this shit. Because everybody, we don't have money issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't have money issues. We don't have no problems, a big you, little I. We know our parts and that's it. We ain't deviating from that shit. And that's what it's all about. You see what I'm saying? I love that. Donnie, you got anything? I have a lot. I think we're going to run out of time, no, but we I have not, a lot. Sure. So one, <laughs> I got one, time. Of the, one of the things that, that I'm thinking about is you're telling your story. You said 20 years in prison. There's so many people who are stuck in their moment right now. Like I'm in the hood. I don't have any money. I'm homeless. I'm locked up. And they can't see past it, right? You came out. You hit the ground running, but a shift had to happen for you while you were in that situation, what was that shift? What was that thing that said, look, I got 20 years, but when I get out, I have something that I'm about to build and something that's waiting on me. When I was in jail, like I always tell people, I wasn't in jail, I was in jail, I was in prison, I was in Princeton, I wasn't in state pen, I was in Penn State. Mm-hmm. It was a time that took place in jail where I just stopped dealing with the bullshit. Because jail is just like the streets. The homeboys that were still talking about back in the day, they were still talking about who getting money, who shot who. I got away from that shit. Mm-hmm. I read more. I tapped into Anthony Bourdain on the show. I used to watch him religiously. I started studying marketing on a high level on the agency side. What colors evoke emotion and what's this? I just started understanding that the McDonald's commercial wasn't a McDonald's commercial. It was a commercial that they paid the advertising agency to make. So I learned the game of life. And I just started focusing on what was important. And uh, that's when my life changed in it because I realized that I wasn't the real that I thought I was because the real that people talk about in the streets, he ain't got no conscience. I always thought about the shit that I did after I did some dumb shit in the streets. <laughs> and I wasn't really, I wasn't really that cold. You know what I mean? I just knew that I was out there and I was out there because in the ghetto, it always tell you that in order to be cool in black America, you got to do a lot of illegal shit. You got to yeah. sell dope. You got to have all these clothes on. I mean, cause the women ain't going to talk to you in our culture. You see what I'm saying? You got to think about it, man. A lot of, uh, if you look at it, if you ain't get no money, if you ain't got all this shit on, they ain't going to talk to you in our culture. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was like, and ain't nobody going to say you cool. It's a, it's a long ass list when you black in order to be cool. You got to check all these boxes off. You got to go to jail. You got to be willing <laughs> to shoot a nigga. Yeah. You got to have a gun on you for no reason. <laughs> you got to have a Rolex. <laughs> You gotta have a car. You gotta have a gun for no reason. For no reason. You, you no gotta, bullets. You get, but you, you got, got the gun. You gotta be able to buy a Birkin bag. Yeah. All this, all this crazy. Shit. So it's like, how do you feel about that though? Like, do you think that that mindset that. is justified? Like, do you think women are justified for saying, "I'm not dating nobody who ain't getting no money in these streets"? No, my whole thing is, uh, my whole thing is, there's a flip side to that. Okay. Now. A lot of people would say what well, they not dating, right? But historically in our community, black women dated down and black men dated up. Mm, Hold, on. Go, Hold on. You got to go into that. Now, let me explain something to you. A lot of times, let me give you the game on this. I'm a street nigga and I'm from the West End in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, the woman that I'm dealing with, she a registered nurse. Mm-hmm. She done went to school, got some education up on her. See, we behind the eight balls, black men, because when we was going to jail, when we was out here being real niggas in the streets or when we was doing all this other stuff, even if we had a regular job, black women was going to get an education. They was going to trade school. They was going to nursing school. They was going to all this education. They was learning about their credit. They was learning this. That's why a lot of women is so advanced out here. And a lot of brothers are buying our back. because brothers coming home from prison. Brothers just realizing at 40, I don't want to be a street nigga no more. <laughs> Whole time, Keisha, Kiki, Nikki, and Tammy, 
they got a you know eight hundred credit score. Yeah, they got a good ass job. They might have a kid. Their kid might be a teenager now. They didn't been through the bullshit relationship. They know who they is. They didn't heal, and they come in and they might give you a shot. Yeah, they might give you an unbelievable shot. And it's been historically in the hood where his sister give you a shot, and they'll be on some shit like you know what? I see potential in him because we always it's that mother in y'all that always believe. I'm going to change this Negro up. So when I say black women always dated down and black men dated up, that's true. Mm -hmm. So we always had this. So, so it got to a point where black women didn't, didn't try so much. They didn't try so much. Now they're like, oh, f I, you ain't a millionaire. I ain't dealing with you. <laughs> <laughs> so what? I'm in section. I live in the projects. I need somebody that got the bag. Get me out. <laughs> Get me out. Get me out. Save me, You know, please. because, because <laughs> you know, the young women today, I don't think they seen what some of the women older than them seen. If you sure. like, if you in your forties, some of y'all in your late thirties, some of y'all, some of y'all seen when your grandpa, or your father, your uncle didn't play no games. He took care of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Things was right, mm -hmm. you know. And I came up in an era where, though, my OGs, a lot of my OGs was drug lords. They had a shitload of drugs. They had a bunch of money. And I would see my old heads, you know, deal with women. They took care of everything. They, you know, and I'm talking about everything. They did not, they did not play when it came to a woman. Like they didn't, they didn't, you know, this back before women was running around being entrepreneurs right. and running around with Bentleys mm -hmm. and getting the bag. You know what I mean? Right. This back when women just waited on a man, you know what I mean? In the 80s and all that stuff, late 90s, early 90s and all that. So it switched now. Women is like, and even now. Women like, man, psh, I'm going to build me a king. They still out here trying to build the king. I'm going to build me a king. Golly. Me. These women out here building kings. Hey, you know? real quick, Wallo, <laughs> I ain't building no king. I ain't saying you, <laughs> ain't, saying you ain't. But I, I, I don't know if I'm doing the Lego project. I'm right. putting but the I ain't saying you want a different, you have a different mindset. <laughs> you, you got a different mindset because you, you didn't grew. You didn't right, been through right, some right, bullshit. Right. There was a time in my life that I probably saw so much of what I could build and bring out of somebody. And still to this day, I think, I don't, I don't know if it's like building a king necessarily, but anybody that you want to spend some time with and spend your life with, you see something that you can develop in them and pull you know what out I'm saying? of them. So, but so it's like, it's like, it's like at the end of the day, it's like, I understand a lot of women. I don't, I ain't mad at them, but at the same time, it's a lot of, I see a lot of entitlement on social media yeah. because we got different platforms and memes that messed a lot of people's minds up. Yo, talk about it. And when I say it messed a lot of people's minds up, it's like, like, I, like, like I'm not no specialist. I'm a single man. I don't know nothing. I, don't, yeah. I, I just know what I, I'm just giving them my opinion of what I see, but it's like, all right, baby girl, you saying you want, you want this, you want that. Can you match mines? Cause I know what I got. My shit is serious. I'm a one percenter out here. Is that what you really want, though? You no, want somebody it, to match you. It ain't about that. But when you coming like that with that gotcha. energy, baby girl, I'm gotcha. a one percent out here. I'm 43. I ain't got no kids, and I got it for real. This ain't no. This ain't my financial <laughs> statement. Is ill. <laughs> it's ill. I love it. When you see, you're like ill. Ill. Wait. What I'm gonna do? Ill. <laughs> <laughs> them real. Them zeros, baby. They for real. They zeros. They real. So, so my whole thing is like. Like let's that's not play. Right. So when people would come and say, "Oh, I want this. I want that. I want that." I ain't no problem with that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But you ain't even had to come like that. Why are you coming like that? Why you just can't say, "Hey, my name Keisha. Hey, what's up, baby? How you doing? Yeah. Let's go out on a date. Let's go kick it with each other." But when I'm looking at your profile and then your profile, see, we gotta understand the introduction is your social media. I always told my homegirl, I said, "Listen, watch what you put on." She was like, "Why?" Because I'll be in a room with a lot of dudes that got a lot of money, and we be talking, and I see that a lot of men can't handle that. Because a lot of men, base you think, oh, that just a LeBoy memes. That was just funny. No, you saying this is who you are. Mm. You subscribing to that mindset, baby girl. I think the meme culture has messed up a lot. It messed a lot because it, it get taken out. Lot. It get taken out of context. You might put something up talking about it's funny. Now, dude, thinking that's your mindset. Yeah. 100%. I told Justin LeBoy myself. We was laughing. I said, and he laughed. I said, you ever? I said, you ever sent the girl fifteen hundred just because it was Friday? He looked at me, he was laughing. He's like, laughing. I'm like, why you telling dudes that? You, you, got, you got a lot of women, you got a lot of women losing. I knew a woman that lost her man over some memes. You know why? Boy come out of jail, good dude. He working in the UPS, getting it. He doing his thing. He got his shit going on. He love this girl, he doing it. 
she keep throwing up memes and he kept like thinking like, did she tell me what's going on? She uh, my shot. Said, get, 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 get your girl 1500 because it's Friday. He's like, I ain't got 1500 to give her. Mm hmm. Good dude, though. Mm -hmm. She had nothing for posting that, though. He dipped on her. Now he got a whole new situation. And when I see, I'd be like, see? He, no, and it wasn't about it. It was more. I'm just saying, you, like, everybody want, everybody want to live this illusion they life. Everybody in fantasy world on social media, that's an illusion. Yeah. yeah. Most of it. It's an illusion. It's a lie. You got magicians on that. <laughs> 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 and nobody posts nothing that they don't believe in. Like, you don't put, like, you, you might think it's funny, but you think. You you believe that. You, you don't post something it. that you don't. I, right? I have shared some memes like behind the scenes with my girls that I don't believe it, but it's Tell hella me funny. One. Give her fifteen hundred dollars on Friday. You believe it. <laughs> no. See, see? No, it's Friday. But, but that's the thing. Like you'll share it. That's not what I'm looking for. That's not what not I require. What you're but it's for, mad but, funny. But you don't disagree with it. You don't. I mean, if you got fifteen hundred dollars to give on Friday, why not? <laughs> see, see, see. <laughs> see. But but, but see, see, you know what I think it is. I ain't gonna front when I came home from jail. Right, this no boy. This this was crazy, because social media is weird. Because you hit a girl, right? There's no, you always hear girls on there come and don't DM me, don't do that. Like, why is you on there like looking good like that, looking all delicious? <laughs> looking delicious. You on there looking delicious and then you when a man DM you, you on there writing a meme, don't DM me, right. don't do this at third. And I was like, you can't do that. Then when I came home from jail, they was treating me like I was just like this dinosaur because I never forget, I'm going to tell you this here. I come home from jail, a woman, man. We pull up. I'm like, yo, yo, pull over, pull over, pull over, pull over real quick. But he's like, damn, what's wrong? He pull over. I jump out the car. I run halfway back down the street. Yo, what's up? Shorty, come here. What's up? Right? She looked at me <laughs> <laughs> like I lost my mind. <laughs> and he was like, yo, bro, they don't be doing it out here. What you mean? Do no you can't do that no more. I'm like, you can't even speak to a woman. Like, like, and then I kept seeing it. I, I say something to a woman coming out of the store and they be like, Pfft. Like, damn, I'm trying to speak. I'm trying to give you some action. Like, what's going on? Right, right, right. Like, I'm trying to get with you. I'm trying to get up on your body. Um, I mean, so it's like, it was, that was crazy. So now you're going to DM is crazy. A chick will be on, the, on, on Instagram looking extremely delicious, right? Mm -hmm. And you like, damn, I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> like, oh, God. Like, well, it'd be like, I'm hungry. You look cute. Ass. Look at you, girl. I mean, they'd be like, they look at your jaw. <laughs> I would shut that down. Listen, so I always tell my young boy. They ask me like, "Wow, oh, oh, what should I do?" Listen, come here, give me your phone. DM up right here, do it. No, I ain't DM. I ain't gonna. She gonna play me. They look at it. I'll just be, be throw the question mark like, or throw that face like. <laughs> I'm like, damn, that's great. Well, uh, you be in the DMs, man. Oh no, I done been in some DMs before. Uh -huh. <laughs> I done been in some DMs, but mine's I ain't had them issues. Right, right. I ain't, listen. You had an issue. Somebody done treated you like you lost your mind. Uh, like I don't know though. No, what? I don't it, know. It has happened to everybody. It's something. No, no, about, no, 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 no. It happened to everybody. But it'd be like it, you, you, you had them issues where it's though you would DM somebody. See, see, that's why the in person is way better. Mm -hmm. It's way better. I'm talking about it's way better. But you, everybody had a joint where they DM somebody, and the girl would be like, they would say some, you know, something <laughs> slick, or you'd be like, ah. Oh. <laughs> you be like, damn. And then you'll throw it back. You try to play ping pong. Yeah. And then try to walk it down until she passed that number For off. Sure. Some shit. Everybody didn't had that. Yeah, but I'm saying he probably test the water. It's not just, oh, she dope. Let me just DM her. It's probably like some, oh, you like my stuff? Oh, you. Oh, I'll say something in, like uh, to I one got of the Wallow messages. Being store. Direct. Nah. What's I don't, up, Shorty? You I look can't, delicious. I can't, I can't see Wallow <laughs> said. Mighty. Mighty or streamy. <laughs> you look mighty delicious. You look mighty delicious. I'm, I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just talking. But, uh, Wait, we uh, can't have the comments like, yeah, I got one of them from him too. <laughs> they might be in there. They might be there. Atlanta is something else. You know what I mean? They got them down. Atlanta, Houston, they got them down here. Yeah. Are you on dating apps? No, I was when I was in prison though. <laughs> what? Really? I was on, listen, there's no bullshit. <laughs> I was on meetinmate.com. I was on plentyoffish.com. Meetinmate.com. Yeah. What? I came up on them joints. <laughs> <laughs> you still got the no, I ain't got that, but I'm going to show you. <laughs> Y'all think I'm lying. You got your profile picture. So listen, I ain't got all that. He said, I came up with them joints. Meet, though. meet an inmate.com. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So it do it be like pen pals or do they come see, do they come see you? A little the, bit of yeah. both. A little hybrid is, model. Is it, were you on one of the <laughs> prisons you had conjugal joints? I can't. Look, look. Meetanmate.com. Mm -hmm. What is that? Oh, you got all this new stuff. Let me see. See. <laughs> Listen, tracing all oh, steps. Look, 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 look. 
This is where I used to be. I used to be in this section. Look, there's no book. Look, look. You Yo. go in this. You had your picture there, your age, which state you in. I was on this joint. It's a real Yo. thing. Listen, put it, it's make sure you pop up the screen. Yo. Look, 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 look. look. It say what state you in. Look, your name. It say the state, the name. You had the prison photo. You hit the joint, right? Hit the joint. And it break down, you see? You got a whole bio. Listen, you have a whole bio on there. So Yo, I'm on that real quick, look, bro. Look, 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 look. I'm on it, Joel. I want to say. Read his show. Read his show. Hello, my name is so-and-so, but my friends call me Q. I'm a very respectful person. What state person. is he from? What prison he at? He is in Iowa Park, Texas. It's crazy. You got the sexy face on and everything. Like, <laughs> Yo, believe I'm it I'm a not. fun person and love family. If you would like to talk, you can write me or J-Pay me with a return address. Then you can write a J-Pay letter. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and they can put bread on that though, right? You can put bread on it, but you also can write an uh, email. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But like, you'll go in there and you, you'll be sitting there, man, listen, man. <laughs> See, I, and I used to write letters for a couple of homies that couldn't read. So I used to write oh. letters, read or write. So I used to write the letters so you could, you know, so it'd be crazy. But this is how the game would go. I'm going to give you the jail game. So say you my homie, Dave. Dave my homie. Dave got a girl. She coming to see him. This is her third. This is no bullshit. I've done this plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this plenty of times. So, so you my homie. You got a girl. She moving out. I might be like, damn man, what's up with your girl? Where's she? Oh, my girl registered nurse. She registered nurse. I light up. I said, okay. Like, like she be working. With, there's a bunch of girls in the office, right? He be like, yeah. I be like, yo, man, I need a salad. I need you to give her this letter and this picture until I just pass it around. See who, see who bite. Wow. Right? So no, no more. Wow. So listen, so listen, so listen. Still yeah, pass it around. And once somebody always bite, I be in there, nice <laughs> picture, smiling. You know what I mean? Just uh, night, my penmanship good. I know how to write a letter. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Aaliyah, That's said, crazy. Aaliyah said four page. I put a 40 page letter down. Sheesh. Long hand too. I got good penmanship and all that. So I'm like, you know, and it depends on the letters that they like. Romantic Jones, you know, we could be in Italy. You know what I mean? I'll, read, I'll grab a magazine, find some shit. I could be in any city you want Yo. me to be in. Copywriter. So, That's so, lit. So, so, so I'm writing it. I'll break, I'll break the whole scenery down. It depends on how long we've been in. So now we're talking romantic letters. It might be, you know me. I mean? Uh, you know, we probably was in San Francisco. I'd be like, we was in San Francisco four seasons. Union Square. You know, when we went into the room, it'd be, it'd be great. And you paint this whole picture. I'll be painting the whole picture. And they right? paint it back. And they be painting it back. And then listen, I, I write enough. You know what I mean? By the time I write down, I get to where it's though she on the bed, got that Victoria's Secret on. Then I'll be like, you continue. You go from here. This shit come back. Wow. And then it'll be, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be real, it get real explosive. You dig what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? She might send some pictures. You know what I mean? And I didn't discriminate. I ain't discriminate. You know mm. what I mean? I ain't, you know, I mean, I'm doing time because it was like you just doing your time. You just yeah. having a pen pal. You writing, you you kicking your one two. Them letters coming, them stack of letters coming. in. Mm. It was crazy, man. I, you know, wow. But, but but like you know, you uh, it was different. So when you say date naps, yeah, I was on a lot of them joints, man, in jail, man. But not today. For what? Did you ever Instagram is a date nap? Oh yeah, yeah. <clears throat> did you ever? Did you get out and get together with any of them? No. No. Mm. One of the why one, because the fantasy's over or what? no? One of the girls I was kicking it with for I me. Mean, she had she. I remember she uh. Uh, she came up on a Dear John uh, visit. She was like, it's about that time I got to go. You know, I got to found somebody. I'm like, damn, you know. What's, what's a Dear John visit? Like, she out of here. Bye. Bye. Oh. So I'm like, damn. I was like, damn, you know me. I mean, this last tuna sandwich. Give me some tuna. Give me some nachos. Uh, give me this, because we in the visit room, the vending mm -hmm. machine. I'm like, damn. It was a walk of shame when I went back to the block that day. I went in the cell, laid down, took a nice nap that night. You know what I mean? But it was what it was. Is it because you cared about her or because no, I really cared about her. Okay. You know what I mean? I really cared about her. She was a good good woman. She was she was rocking with me. You know, uh she went and had a baby. This other one I had had a baby. The one before that had a baby. They, you know, they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what's crazy? They you probably responsible. He's probably responsible for the baby. Yes, like, yes. like set the move. Oh, for sure. Well, she's I actually thinking about you. They like, definitely well, continued in, in real life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I used to get my what's name. My little, you know, they see you, you know, especially when you like them, they see your shots, they, the panty shots, they can set it all the different lingerie. You know, that's when you know you're in the cell, you put the towel up, you look at them and go on a date. You know what I mean? You treat yourself. You know what I mean? So, you know, that was my thing. You know, it was just real wild, man. It was just like, it was just crazy. But like, I really love writing love letters. That was my thing. Like, mm -hmm. I really loved it. You still do that in women no, that you're dating right now? No, I don't do that. I don't do that now, but. Uh, Would you? Uh, yeah, without a doubt, okay. because uh, I think it's 
My wife would melt if I did that. I think we got to go to- Most women would melt. I think we got to go back to somewhere because it's like, everything is just oversaturated. It's like, we don't got nothing that's personal no more. No more. Yes. It's like, I text you, you text me. I call you, call me. We go here, we go. It's like, can we go somewhere and we ain't taking pictures of nothing? Are we just enjoying the vibe? Mm -hmm. Like, we, like could, you, could you take a woman to the zoo? Could you take a woman? Like, like first of all, once you got the bag, it's like, all right, you know he got money. Yeah. Like, you don't have to, or even if you don't, even if you just, like, can it be something that ain't got something to do with something that somebody already done on social media that yeah. you got to reproduce? For sure. It's to the point now where you can't even share sweet text messages with your significant other. They're going to screenshot and say, oh, oh look yeah. what they sent me today. Your message is going on Instagram, on the story <laughs> post, for sure. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yo, how do you date? Are you are you like the yo? Let's go crazy! Like, am I? You get flued out, or you were just a yo? I ain't spent no bread like that. Oh no 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 no! I'm not going. Like like me, uh, I'm not no stingy individual. You know what I mean? You go crazy. Uh, no, I ain't gonna say I go crazy. But if I take you to Target, I'm gonna say go crazy. Go crazy. Target. You know what I mean, if you go to Target, go crazy. Go crazy. See, listen, listen, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell everybody. Newsflash! I just want to say this to all the gentlemen out there. Listen. You really want to knock a woman's socks off and 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 have her like just crazy about you? You're gonna do this. You want to do these three stops? Come on, baby, we going on a date. Where we going? I'm gonna take you somewhere that you've never been in your life. Nobody never took you. I'm gonna take you to the moon and back, baby. Mm. Okay. You take her. Meet me here. She gonna be like, damn, I'll meet you here. You gonna she gonna meet you at the grocery store, right? Mm -hmm. You are gonna take a grocery shopper. Number one. Let me okay. give you the game about grocery shopping. Talk to me. When a woman go grocery shopping, when you get in there, you're going to get two cars, say, baby, go crazy. She's like, what you mean? Just go ahead. By the time she leave, now you can take on a date, spend three, four hundred dollars. That's nothing. Mm -hmm. But by the time she leave the coals with the seafood and all that, she already three, four hundred in. Mm -hmm. Crab meat, the lobster, all that stuff she getting. Yep. The, the, you know you know the how y'all go. The filet. Mm -hmm. Bang, you got that. Yeah. Then she got to go get her beefs and all that stuff. Her beefs, her poultries and chickens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's going to take you up another 200. So you got like six damn near four. <laughs> That's right? hilarious, bro. Then you got the joint. You're going to tell her to go crazy. She got kids or something. She got to get the zoom zooms and wham wham and snaps and juicy juices. Get all them go fruit loops. Get all the fruit loops. Go crazy, baby. <laughs> right? She going to do all that, right? Then when y'all leave it, guess what? Put a put anything in the car, you bag anything. So now y'all just spent the damn near two hours in the drawers. Y'all talking, yeah. getting to know each other. You pulling, you pulling. Pulling her hair behind her ear, you look at you, look so good, kissing on the face. Golly, love. Look at you, girl. You got listen. You got to be affectionate. To grab us, you know, squeeze her. You know, when you might be in line or you might be standing, she might be waiting on John. You stand behind her, grab her ass, kiss on her. I mean, let her know. <laughs> you know you me, right? You know you me. You got to talk some crazy. You got to be crazy because listen. One thing about me is different for me because they gonna laugh because I'm a friend. Right. They know this nigga crazy. So kiss on a joint, I mean, play with it, I mean, just be grabbing they, everybody walking by and all that shit, they love that shit. Mm -hmm. They love it, because everybody too cool, they wanna do shit in the dark, we gonna do this shit in the light. <laughs> so now, you, you get to the what's name, it, it depends on how you doing it, who, how close, you just give her the A-Max when she get to the register. Mm -hmm. Babe, let me take this, let me, I gotta do this, let me go grab that. She's like, oh my God, he didn't give me the car. <laughs> she feel all good, that shit like, golly. That shit, that shit, that shit, that shit damn, that shit, it's damn near at a thousand, whatever, but you got, you put anything in the car, Usually where a grocery store at across the street is a gas station. Mm -hmm. Take over there, fill a tank, 93. Fill it up, my man. Mm -hmm. 93. Mm -hmm. Don't <laughs> matter that, what she drives. Then I don't care what she drives. 93. You got to change her whole system because you, what you're doing is you got to deprogram in order to reprogram. Right. <laughs> so keep game. Keep game. Then after that, <sighs> you take it to a woman's playground. You take it to Target. Take it in there. Go crazy. See, if you don't put the go crazy on this, she ain't going to understand like this dude ain't playing. Right. I don't care if she, what she... That's a nice date because y'all talking. Y'all got been time. Yeah. And guess what? When you leave and she cooking that, she cooking that salmon with that with that rice or whatever she cooking, she thinking about you. Mm -hmm. Cause that whole freezer got your name all over it. Baby. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? All that stuff she got in there, the bed. She get a car the next day. When she go <laughs> 93, it's all in the top. Listen, when, when she go to spray that, spray that 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 lemon flavored chloride over the over the drink, she what? <laughs> hey, you bought that. <laughs> when she crack open that soap. You bought that. When the raises, or oh, oh, that near, the cleaner mm -hmm. legs and mm -hmm. all that stuff, mm -hmm. you did that. <laughs> you gotta be and crazy. You're so like, serious yo, right so now. Serious. You're so serious. <laughs> I mean, but. Everybody done bought a bag before, especially yeah. you dealing with a. Everybody mm -hmm. done bought a bag. Yeah. But to hold a hand in the grocery store and give her face kisses doing it each different aisle and talk, tell us some. That's you know, you look crazy. Good. So even be. In, now, I would say 
to even be in the grocery store. That's brag worthy. Girl, he took me. He was in the grocery store. She gonna tell a girlfriend. Oh, she, you know what she gonna tell a girlfriend? Yeah. Girlfriend, you ain't gonna believe this. He took me in and guess what he told me? What'd he tell you? Go he crazy. said, go crazy. Go crazy. <laughs> That's all they gonna say. Did he tell you go crazy this time? Go crazy. He took you where? He took you to Target? What did he say? As soon as he went in there, he grabbed two cards. He said, Go crazy. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you, that's life. All you got to do is take me to the restaurant. Give me the menu. Go crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, it's, but it's not as personal. It's, it's like, not as personal. I'm in your house for the never, week. I All your think, necessities. I Nobody never done that to you. I don't think anybody has ever. <laughs> I've had my tank filled up, but I don't think anybody has ever taken me and gotten two baskets. Go crazy. Yo, Listen, what about grocery store, gross. gas, and, and no, 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 no. You, you're not finished. Oh. As you, that's why you got to do it early. After you leave Target, you know where you're going? Taking it to get that car detail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the most practical ill date ever. Like, <laughs> ain't nobody had it ever. ever woman, you can't run into one woman that's been on a date like that. Because I'm ever. telling you, they never, that, that's four stops, bro. The men about to be mad at you in the comments. Listen, that's for no, they not because you. Why, listen, if you gonna go to Chanel and buy a bag, you know, you, if you buying a real one, you five thousand in. Five in. Sure. You could buy a little small one, three thousand in. That's the same price point. It's less than that. Yeah. That whole place, and I just mm -hmm. said that whole go crazy package right there. That's under twenty five hundred. The go crazy package. The go crazy it's package. The go crazy package. <laughs> the, G, <laughs> the GCP. And the go crazy. The GCP. The GCP. Bro, do that for your wife and watch. Watch what she do. <laughs> The go got, crazy go, bag. Think about it. You go get a bag. It's like, oh, you got a bag, and that's easy. Anybody do that? It's no thought into that. Mm. Women love when shit is thought out. Yeah. yeah if you plan sure. a date, women love when they go into the restaurant and you. They ain't just saying your name. They saying both of your names. Mm -hmm. you know, what's the name? What's, they're like, oh my god, you put me on the reservations. It's loose, man. It be the loose. They count, mm. man. I like that. Man. You know what I mean? Well, I'll ride dope the date, man. Probably as a woman, I'm crazy. Probably trouble. I'm, now, I'm crazy as shit too, though. We know how <laughs> you get them, but how do they get you? Mm. Um, Restop that. Uh, I clock. just think. I just think a lot of times, just be you. You ain't gotta have all these things. You ain't gotta just be a beautiful girl, man. That's inside out, and just be you and be cool. Be, be humorous. Be be down to earth, and I'm cool. What you like though? Uh, Delicious. She, she now she look mighty delicious. Mighty delicious. Delicious is different. So delicious could be chocolate. Delicious could be butterscotch. Y'all be saying, it just be you. It, just be you. I don't think I got. No, I'm like, no, what's the name? I ain't got no type. <laughs> delicious yeah, girls is, is the, the only. only oh, <laughs> take that back. I ain't got no type. <laughs> Delicious girls is the only thing that I like. See? I mean, you know I got a bite. <laughs> Let's go look. Uh, you know, oh <laughs> no, straight up, man. Yeah, you like, like listen, you gotta think about this. I was in jail for a thousand years. I'm just living and I'm happy. Yeah. I ain't yeah. tripping about shit. Sure. Like everybody taking life too serious. Like, yo, I ain't going to be here forever. Yeah. Let me have fun. Let me live life. Let me help people and let me go. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever happened, happened. If it don't, it don't. I'm not going to look into this shit too deep, Dave. Yeah. You know what I mean? People go get migraines and get arse, just yeah. overthinking this shit. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like live, have fun. If it happened, it don't. If it meant to be, find some good. I think we all going to find some good people during this journey through life that we're going to be good with. Yeah. That's going to help us. Some people going to hurt us. You got three, the three H's. They gonna help you. They gonna hinder you. Or you they gonna or they gonna hurt you. Mm. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you gotta you gotta understand what the three H's is. It's gonna be some people, but it's like everybody ain't perfect. Yeah, you know what I mean. But I think all of us out here, I think we all got an army of people. If it's eight billion people on this planet, just think about it. All of us got a good one fifty, two hundred thousand that really can rock with us. Yeah. Mm. Everybody that follow you don't follow you. Some people following you to be newsy. Some people just following you because it look they, it was one video that made them follow you, but they not following you. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we get caught up in them numbers and we forget that like you might put something up and there's be that three, four people that have really affected or changed their life out of the millions. Yeah. And we be overlooking it. So, you know, just live your life. When you leave, when you leave, you just want to be able to say, I maxed my shit out out here. I maxed out on life. If you did, you did. If you didn't, you didn't. No, but I don't no. think we got to take this shit too deep. For sure. I mean, but like, you know, I just want to salute you. What y'all doing, y'all doing some real shit, you know? Uh, Thank you. Because y'all bringing information to people. There's a lot of people out here bringing information to people. I salute everybody because uh, to be able to share, that's hard. Because you understand one post could change somebody's life. Yeah. Facts. One post could have somebody like, oh, damn, I got I'm going to get on my shit. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you know, like I don't know when it's going to air. When it's going to air, I don't know. It's coming up soon. Yeah. But 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 we know as of today, <clears throat> it's thirty days left before the new year. And as the new year come, I believe everybody got some important people, places, and things that's awaiting their arrival. Mm. But is you willing to take the journey and be disciplined and able to get to meet them new people, to meet them new things, to get them new opportunities? Who know? That's why I always tell people: just go, just live. Don't overthink this shit, but think about it. If you could do something every day to get you closer to your dreams, you know how close you'll be? Yeah. Small. You know, a person be like, I want to start a business. Okay. This one I need you to do. Sit there and write down 10 business names. And how do these business names align with your delivery of your business? Bang. The next day, once you find one, go online or call somebody you know, set up LLC. It takes a couple minutes. After that, get a logo done. After that, Take the LFEIN number and tell us he go set up a bank account. It's stuff in a week that you get so much done and it's, you only doing one thing a day. Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, you got your whole joint, you got your LF, you got all your stuff, you ready. Yeah. Find out where you gonna get your supply from if that, if it's whatever type of company it is or equipment, whatever. Even if you just write your equipment list down, do something, get a little notebook, do something. And uh, I think if you could do that, you could get closer. And I think we'd be so caught up in thinking, oh, I gotta do all this stuff. And it's like, how many times you strolling? Like for me, I was in a room talking to a bunch of people and I said, how many of y'all on Instagram all the time? They all love Instagram. Yeah. You know, Instagram be popping. How many of Everybody raised their hand. I baited yeah. them. <laughs> I said, how many people make money from Instagram? I said, yo, stand up. Go to the side for me right there. It was like a couple people. I said, all y'all get the f- off Instagram. That's why y'all not materializing <laughs> y'all dreams. <laughs> y'all doing on Instagram all the time. <laughs> y'all on Instagram all the time for what? Y'all ain't making nothing happen. Y'all know everybody business. Y'all know who who, who bought this, who bought the Chanel bag, who got the Lamborghini, who ain't doing this, but y'all ain't getting no money. Why you want a place where you ain't get, why you not taking that time and energy into the places that you need to take into, whereas though you could be able to go to the next level. Yeah. You won't do that. Oh, things ain't going right for my life. This You in the hookah lounge every night, but things ain't going right for your life. Mm. I can't tell. I don't believe you. Gotta be going good because you celebrating every night. You celebrating mm. nothing. So everything is about mindset, man. But you got to deprogram yourself in order to reprogram yourself. We learned a lot of bulls in the ghetto. Huh. So how are you going to reprogram yourself in order to go to the next level? So that's the issue. Mm. I love it, man. Brittany, you, you, you ready to find your king? Just tell him like that's what you need. <laughs> you gotta take you to the market. <laughs> yeah, if he don't take you to the market, he ain't right, for you, girl. Job, Dating is the first dates are different now. Different. First dates are different now. <laughs> I love it. Yo, love, no, they different. You, man. The first dates are different, huh? I changed uh, the first date. Yeah, 100%. You just, yeah, the, what See, I, here's it? the thing. It, for, okay, so it's a couple adjustments I make on first date. Instead of two carts, maybe one. Or we just go the to Walmart. Basket. A basket you, is hard. The one, hand basket. No, no, this is what you do. This is what you do. <laughs> the Lord. The Lord. This is what you do. Go crazy. <laughs> all, 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 go crazy. All, 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 pharmaceuticals and go a, crazy. It's the flip side of that. You can't cook for. You can't. You can you can. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can. And you know what's crazy? Uh, I'd be mad nervous to have people cook for me, though. Mm-mm. You, you want to tell the story? I don't have a story. You actually. got a story. Most people can't. Somebody got a story about that microwave. Did the dude cook Ooh, for you? I do have a story. Did the dude cook for you? No. Okay, I got to tell this story. Yeah, please, you got to tell story. This is wild. This was years ago, okay? <laughs> she she got to let it know. I ain't going for this these days, but this was back in the day when I went for this. this it was years ago. So Dave calls me a couple of, a, a month or two ago and he's in this suit store and he's like, yo, I'm in here with your ex. I was like, my ex in the suit store? Who? And he shows me who this guy is. I'm like, yo, did dude tell you he's my ex? Ooh, I love it. <laughs> he told he you that. Say, did no, he say that? He said they dated. Okay. Dave they gets dated. on the phone and says, I'm in the store with your ex. Yes. And he shows that. me who the guy is. And I'm like, he, he told you he's my ex. Anyway, so he's like, yo, what's the backstory on that? So this guy takes me on a date. Long story short, because it's a long story. Long story short, he was moving into this new spot. He had met me at my job. And because I had done some business with him, I was comfortable going to his new spot, right? He's taking me to this new spot, or he asked me to meet him at this new spot. The new spot is his crib. His crib. crib. He asks me, he's like, I'm going to be moving in, you know, yada, yada, yada. Just meet me here. You could park your car here and we'll go eat from there. So we go eat at this restaurant or whatever. We go out. I never went into his spot. We go out. We have a good time. We got leftovers. The leftovers are in his car. He brings me back to my car. 
So the next day I'm like, damn, I left my food in his car. Right. Mm -hmm. So I hit him up or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you did leave your food, but why don't you come through? You can help me, you know, unpack some stuff and we'll have the food. Perfect idea. He's an amazing gentleman. Next day, get there. We're un- unboxing. I'm hungry. He fixes my plate. Okay. He fixes With the, the le- leftovers. He fixes my leftovers, puts the leftovers in the microwave. He brings them to me. He serves it. I'm eating, tearing stuff up. We got more food left. So we start putting some more, unpacking some more things. And I'm like, yo, I'm hungry again. I'm going to go get us some food and warm some more food up. I go to the kitchen. I open that microwave. He just moved. He just got the keys to this place yesterday. I open this got dang on microwave. There is old ass spaghetti. Like. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tell me more. Please. I love you this shit. You know how you put a plate in the microwave Was too it long and it, it explodes? Yeah. The microwave had exploded. There's little dried noodles He's hanging. There's it. mold in the back of it. And I turned, I said, did you- What type of place he moved in? The Yajek? He moved in, no, it was a dope. Right, he he had to have taken that microwave out of the old crib in a box. No, this is the microwave that came with the the house. with the house. This is why I'm so livid. This is the, I said, yo, this can't be the microwave you put my food in. And he was like, yeah, 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 everything okay? (laughs) Nigga. He didn't even look at it. You know everything is not okay. No, he had previously had heated the- my food up. He saw it. You let so. me go to this microwave with mold and old spaghetti sauce and noodles hanging from the top. But you gotta understand, like you. That no, was, I don't understand. But I'm saying you just gotta understand <laughs> that was your ex, so you gotta no, give no, him no, a pass. No, he, not a, <laughs> he was not he an not ex. Your ex bro. This was the result of a first <laughs> and last date. When I tell you, damn, that might I was vicious. so disgusted. Yo, I'm a germaphobe. I'm a lightweight. Out. I cursed him out so bad, and I left. Funny thing was. The next couple of weeks, he's sending me screenshots of a conversation that he started with a housekeeper. Y'all got a housekeeper. You know, will you Please, come back? Please, baby, give me another chance. Sir, there's not enough cleaning teams in the city of Atlanta for me to ever. It was so disrespectful. You made a king. So disrespectful. Without Ima- you, To me, it's the equivalent of imagine you go into a woman's home. Oh, man. And you use her toilet and it's previous like poop stains in the toilet. And she comfortable letting you go inside to use her toilet. Oh, she's a nasty mother. You're she's nasty. nasty. Ah. You are filthy trifling. If she let me do that, that thing, that thing got to have a little wing to or, it. Or, it's twangy. It's twangy, baby. That's, exactly, it's twangy. that's how I felt. She or you, me. or you went to her house at night. Y'all, y'all, y'all hang out. Y'all just ki- chilling. You fall asleep in the bed. You wake up the next morning with the lights on. You roll it back and you see stains on that. You joint. see you like, stains Yo. on the sheets. Ooh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That is the rage that went through. Yo, you me. know what's crazy? I, I be paranoid of beds and shit. Like, do you know? I, I had one of the most. It wasn't that time when we was name, but I had a. Uh, I, I got some money from a hotel in Atlanta. I can't say the name. I go in there. I'm there for a couple of days. I'm not gonna say it's, it's a big. It's a big host. So I'm not gonna say the names. This like early in the game when I first mm-hmm. like I think it might be 2017. So I come down to Atlanta. I'm in this hotel. I'm not paying attention. I just kept scratching my leg, but I don't pay no attention. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pete, I lay no down. It's like, it's like in the middle of the day, I take a shower. I said, let me go lay down. I lay down. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this is too crazy. So, I'm my foot inches. So, I, I get up. I go to the bathroom. I'm like, what the fuck? I, go I put my foot on a sink to see it. It was a bed bug on my foot. Mm. So I say, okay, click, click, take the picture, right? <laughs> click, click. I grab the bed bug, throw it in the bag, right? <laughs> I go down front. I'm like, yo, man, what the? When I say they panicked, when I say they was like, hold up, come here, come to the back room. Uh, I bet. Ain't no back room. I call my intellectual property attorney, <laughs> Shay M. Lawson in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. She did all my trademarks. Me and I was we regained Wallow 267. She trademarked agent. She's a beast. Mm-hmm. I call Shay. I say, Shay. I show her. She said, <laughs> get everything, get documents. Who is in there? I need to speak to somebody. Man, they were so scared. But I was like, this joint was clean. Mm-hmm. Now I'm coming out of jail. Any hotel is clean to me. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I'm staying at the, the, the West. I'm staying at uh, 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 California Airport, the West. I'm talking about all t- I didn't really know 
these hotels wasn't top notch mm-hmm. to after a while. Right. Because mm-hmm. I'm, I, you know, coming out of the joint, I'm like, damn, this is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Ooh. this Fairfield. Wait till right. I tell my, I got to wipe my homie. Tell him about this get on the bed, bounce a little. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yo, this joint. And I'm like, and then I started noticing my eyes changed as time went by. I started noticing. They had stains on that couch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there stains on the carpet. Did they give you some bread? Did they give me some bread? They cut a check. What? I ain't even had to do nothing. Like she just, she made it happen. She made the magic happen. Just that third. You know what I mean? Sheesh. They, I'm talking about my foot was so bit up. It was crazy. Like it was like not to my foot from being bit up from these bed bugs. And I'm like, how the, f-? like it was like, could you, <laughs> you just be like, you never know. You never know. Dang. Never know. That ain't never happened to you at one of your exes? Yeah, you got Shut a bunch up, of exes. David. Damn, <laughs> you your ex man, microwave man, Y'all microwave man, microwave man. And every chance he gets, he tells somebody, "Oh yeah, I used to date Donnie." No, you did not. Oh, you not, he sir. really on oh, you no, now? Yo, no, you when did When the last not. time he said that's that? on your jacket, fam. A month that's ago. Like, a month ago? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And how long was the microwave incident? Ten years ago. Oh, this boy's like, he on you. He's a stalker. Ten years yeah, ago, yeah. at least. Yeah, but it ain't like credit where I fall off after seven years. That joint's yeah. on you forever. That's forever. That's on you. That's forever. You could never like. You know how many you, people you he never. told that that you don't even hear about. Like, yeah, that's my ex right there. Like, Somebody yeah. show you a clip or something like, oh, yeah, that's my ex. That's telling, my ex. He, right. he probably sending your clips around here. He go look at my ex. He, he dropped I, it. On I this. guarantee you, he does. Damn. I guarantee you, he, he does. A good dude though, man. Shout out to like you him. because you are a good dude. But that was trifling. Can he get another shot? Can he get another shot just because? For no reason. Damn, because of a microwave. Mm-hmm. But she a germaphobe, bro. We all like. Let's say we go out to eat. She's going to send the glasses plastic. back. Uh-huh. No, I need pl- you, don't, you, don't, you don't get the plastic. I will somewhere? get the plastic if if you give me one wrong impression. I need to go cut. Period. But, but when you see when you see when you see the the knife or the spoon and you see spots on it. You gotta go. You get you see that old little piece of food that didn't get cleaned off from the dishwasher. It don't, it don't Dave, even be let that me tell bad. You what Dave actually, do. Dave will see the spot or and wipe there, it off. We were just at breakfast not too long ago, <laughs> and there was sandwich. like a little faint red lipstick. I didn't have on red lipstick, so I'm telling the guy I need to go. Dave grabs. I'll take it. Don't worry no, about no, it. No, 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 no. I, I didn't say it. It wasn't that time. You was, it wasn't that you time. Out of jail. You, you. No, no, no. no. It, was, it wasn't. It Dave wasn't that time. I'm not taking no. I'm not taking dirty dishes. His sanders are super substandard. Yeah, I'm cool. All right, but Dave, let me explain something to you. That's like jail. All right, in prison is like this. <laughs> you just don't have to do it. You free. In, pr- in prison is like this, Dave. Sometimes, say I'm say I'm working the tray room. The trays come through. Once you dump your food out, put the tray. I'll take the tray, bang it. Trash mm-hmm. can. It's a trash bag in it, but it's strictly for banging. She was saying, and I just put it in there. I put a spray it, and it go through the machine. So it go through the machine and just stack. Sometimes you go to chow hall, right? You'll go to the chow hall, go get some, go get your lunch. And when you grab your lunch, say it might be pizza, or whatever pizza. Then after you get to the table, pizza, coleslaw, be pizza, coleslaw. Some Wild bean soup or something. And, and, and listen, and you'll, no, no, no. Yeah. And you'll go to the table and you'll see in the corner some oatmeal from breakfast. Like in the corner. You, <laughs> <laughs> I ain't going front. I've been plenty of times. I'll be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. It's residue. It's all right. And, you, you know, can't I mean, send it back. Eat my pizza. Because I like to put, what's the name on my pizza? The cold sauce. I used to jump down on the pizza. You get real creative when you're in jail. I mean, this is just a, <laughs> I'm like that. Ain't about nothing, man. It was small thing. Eat my little bean soup. Ah, and get up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> now I get out here, I get real bougie. Oh man, oh don't. No, I need some plastic. Let me get plastic in. Yeah. I need a to-go cup. Can I have any? <laughs> oh, that sounds like Donnie, hundred yeah. oh percent. Yo, let's. We gonna eat. What we you gotta, gotta do? I gotta go handle something. But I'm. A, I mean, we gonna just do like this. I'm out of here. Yeah, yo, love. Appreciate it was crazy, you, man. man. Thank, we was all you. over the place in this joint. Yeah, it's it well rounded. It's a well rounded podcast. Well rounded. We got a, We got a chance to hear some stuff. For all you know. ladies out there that's looking for a man, meetmate dot com. Get you a man. Lo, appreciate you, my brother. You, you anything want to uh, say to the no, culture? I'm chilling, man. I'm just chilling, man. Got some new shows coming down the pike. Uh, what you mean? And some new shows coming on me and I was River Game, uh, different joints, you know, on our shit. Network? Gil got some, yeah, Gil got some stuff going on. I got some stuff going on, but it's all under that umbrella. You know what I mean? So you bring other people on? 
Yeah, some other people too. It's going down though. Wait, but it sounds like y'all have y'all own shows coming. Oh, we got some other stuff. And coming you too. just told me not to have my That's own show. Exactly what no, I was no, saying. No, I'm not bro. saying. It. I'm not saying it like that. I'm just saying like. Why are you giving some real confusing <laughs> advice right now? <laughs> confusing. My game. clarity just went right out the window. <laughs> I told, bro. So it's all under. It's going to be the social media so network. I got a That's new. That's what sh- we're talking. Oh, oh, you're talking about that. I ain't know. I ain't know how y'all was doing. I ain't know she yeah. was going somewhere else. No, no she going no, nowhere. She's never going anywhere. That just took. If that just took the first thirty minutes of the. Episode today. Disregard everything you heard while I was saying. No, don't disregard it. Nah, but but it, it does make sense. No, I didn't know what they were saying. I thought she was like, she was. Let's say, for instance, I was, if I was pushing Reese to do his own show, I'd be wrong because he, I mean, I don't know if he would want to, but he's not, he don't really talk like that outside of like, like yeah, yeah, for sure. But I know that she loves the stage. Like when she on stage, she explodes. She loves teaching. She loves talking. I'm just saying, it's it, bro. It's been laziness. Like she, she wants might, to do it. She it's might need like this, bro. A microwave cooking show or something. Like <laughs> <laughs> we got the name of the show. You want to talk? You want to say it? Full transparency. Full transparency. Okay, I like that. So it's going to be everything about Donnie. No hold bar. There it is. Well, not necessarily about me. It's going to be everything. Everything as that it relates to people that I want to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, can I be on? The Very show? similar to the conversation that we had, but while I would have, I would have put your back against the wall, we, w- we would have went deeper. On what? Much deeper. On what? On the deal. I would have pressed. I'm pushing. Yeah. Tell me more. I, Tell me told, more. I gave you a lot of information about that. It's three years, 36 months. Uh, Over 50? What? That's what we want to know, Wilo. What? I told you, you said, honey, I ain't say nothing. I ain't talking about nothing. But listen, it's serious. Yo, that's why the number is so important, bro. The number, all right, put it like this. I'm gonna just you gotta say this. give us something. To I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just say this. I'm gonna just say this. You got when you talk about on uh, all right on this wall. Mm-hmm. Is he missing off the wall? Where Joe Rogan at? Nah, I couldn't. Nah. I couldn't. All right, well, well all right. <laughs> all right, so you say you say when you talk about deals wise is 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 a row, and I'm gonna just say this to row, and that will you got. Howard Stern, you got Joe Rogan, you got Call Her Daddy, yeah, a million dollars worth of game. We in that row. We a part of that row. Mm. Call Her Daddy got 60. She got 60. We a part of that row. Are you above her, that row? Listen, we a part or, of that row. I mean, but on the row, <laughs> are you... <laughs> I'm going to say this. Get him, Daddy. Get him. I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. We, listen, we them, we them guys. <laughs> we them guys. We appreciate what y'all are we them doing. Guys. For like, the culture, yeah. for real. The culture. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for the culture. For the culture. You know, again, why the number is so important, bro? Because I would have never even thought that a podcast would get a $100 million deal if Joe Rogan didn't do it. Or <sighs> Alex getting $60 million, Or even like EYL, if they was like, yo, we got a few million. I'm like, oh, I can I can do that now. No, because right? because you got to understand this. Everything is about when you own your stuff. Everything is about back catalog. Everything is about, you know, uh, you know, license. Because because we got a licensing deal. The back catalog, too. Stay, you know, so. And then new stuff. And then it's a lot of stuff, you know. We got you know, we just know how to. I just caught yeah. it. Three years. 36 months. 36, 36 months, months just, somewhere between 60 and 100. 156 episodes. Somewhere between 60 and 100. Come on, man. He's baseball. What are you talking about right talking. now? I'm, def- I'm definitely a baseball player, guarantee. <laughs> this is, this is baseball numbers. Yo, guarantee. Is, you going to connect to the school? I got you. I told you that. You know what I mean? I told you. You going to tell that. us how to negotiate? I got, I, I got, I could come in here and uh, help, help, help you. Help you gonna represent us? And that's he manage it. Hey, is it a favor that we can call? You know, is this a favor or? No, y'all cool. Y'all be all right. <laughs> you go all this I've been dealing with Dave for a long time. I love it. Man, I appreciate you. Lo, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. This has been, uh, uh, I've been uh, wanting to have this conversation for a while because obviously I get a chance to like talk to you. Uh, when you'll call me and like just inspire me and I'm like dang yeah. the world needs to hear this stuff man because that's the stuff that put the battery in my back and I'll call Donnie all excited like yo we gotta go so any, gotta anytime go. I ever called you like yo Donnie we gotta stop playing I probably just got up the phone a while up, <laughs> yeah, okay? yeah, so uh, yeah. nah I appreciate you appreciate you being you always being transparent always telling your story thank you man thank no you. problem you're a legend alright listen man do yourself a favor go get you some social proof meaning go build something like for real, like build something, but then come back to your community and teach them how you did it. All right, yes, out of here. Let's do it. Peace. That was good.